Tonight is a night of pure adrenaline, where rivalries will be settled, champions will rise, wills will be tested, and legacies will be determined. Tonight, we unleash the fury, as Friday Night Smackdown proudly presents No Mercy. Our main event is a colossal clash for the World Heavyweight Championship, featuring five of the most elite athletes in the WWE today. AJ Styles, Austin Theory, Edge, Randy Orton, and the Scottish Warrior, Drew McIntyre, all share a common goal to claim the ultimate prize. They've been at odds, all vying for the same trophy. Back and forth these men have been for months, but tonight, only one will emerge with the coveted World Heavyweight Championship. Mutual respect led to an alliance, but now it's turned into bitter animosity as Bianca Belair and Shotzi face off in a battle that's been brewing for over a year. Two fierce competitors, once allies, now sworn enemies, will go to war inside the squared circle. Candice LeRae, the scrappy contender, has clawed her way to the top, earning herself a second chance at the Women's Championship. She proved herself a viable threat to Shayna Baszler, but can she overcome the dominance of the Queen of Spades and seize her moment tonight? The American Nightmare, Cody Rhodes, holds the United States title, but Braun Breaker has been on a relentless quest to claim his first championship on SmackDown. When they collide in a match where neither man is backing down, Will Cody retain his coveted title, or will Breaker prove that he is the future of Friday Nights? All roads have led to this moment. The stars of Friday Night SmackDown take center stage in a high-octane showdown, and only the strong will survive. It's nights like tonight that bleed no remorse, no forgiveness, and absolutely no mercy. We welcome you inside the CFG Bank Arena in Baltimore, Maryland for the first part of this doubleheader weekend. First from Friday Night Smackdown, it is the exclusive No Mercy event. And we kick things off this evening with a David vs. Goliath rematch from last month in Sacramento on Smackdown as the human highlight reel ricochet makes his way down the aisle. It's gonna be a great night of action here in Baltimore. Thank you for joining us. Let's kick things off with the one and only. The following contest is scheduled for one fall. Making his way to the ring from Paducah, Kentucky. Weighing in at 190 pounds, Ricochet. Ricochet has been a busy man as of late on Friday Night SmackDown and also through his participation in the Cruiserweight Classic Tournament. This coming Saturday, I should say next Saturday afternoon, Ricochet is set for a quarterfinal match in the CWC against Monday Night Raw's big strong boy, Tyler Bate. Ricochet has had his hands full on Fridays as of late with Cody Rhodes and Braun Breaker, and of course this ever-looming issue with the Nigerian giant Omos. Ricochet defeated Omos last month on SmackDown in Sacramento, a loss that the big man has not forgotten, and he's looking for his payback here tonight in Baltimore. And as we say all the time, it's one thing to knock Omos down, it's a whole other thing to keep him there, but tonight it's one thing to defeat Omos before, but can Ricochet do it again? Will Lightning strike twice in the same place? That is the question we need an answer to. And his opponent from Lagos, Nigeria, weighing in at 400 pounds, the Nigerian Giant. There is something about the atmosphere that just changes when the Nigerian giant Omos enters the room. It's as if business certainly picks up. One of the most intimidating figures to ever step foot inside the squared circle. This is a man who made an open challenge earlier this year and ended up fighting the beast incarnate Brock Lesnar on the grandest stage of them all, WrestleMania. 
And Omos moved to SmackDown shortly after that and has been trying to find his footing. We have seen, seen him go one-on-one -on -one with some of the best of them in John Cena and so forth. But Omos is looking towards Ricochet tonight to build some momentum for the Nigerian giant on the blue brand. As we mentioned, that loss that Omos took to Ricochet. Ricochet may have caught Omos by surprise last month on SmackDown. I'm sure the Nigerian giant has come in with a new game plan tonight and is looking to execute it to perfection here in Baltimore. We thank you for joining us for this live premiere first half of your doubleheader weekend. Monday Night Raw's Unforgiven tomorrow night in Chicago, which we'll talk about later this evening. But here we go, kicking things off at no mercy with Omos versus Ricochet, and Ricochet is feeling the brunt of the Nigerian Giant. And Ricochet had to expect this, with Omos fired up, the man who really wanted this matchup with Ricochet. Remember that ambush a number of weeks ago after Ricochet had unfortunately fell to a hungry Braun Breaker, who we're gonna see in action later tonight, going one-on-one -on -one with Cody Rose for the United States Championship. Ricochet. Fighting an uphill battle tonight, and Omos is gonna make him feel the worst of it. On the road to what Omos hopes is gonna be a victory. Ricochet's got a stick and move. Ricochet has got the win before against the big man. He knows he can do it. And as we mentioned, it's one thing to climb the mountain, it's a whole other thing to do it again. Omos is like Mount Everest in there, and Ricochet is climbing a dangerous pursuit to the top. And into the cover goes Omos, looking for the early victory here in Baltimore. But Ricochet gets the shoulder up. Ricochet's got to stick and move, and I should say Ricochet's got to keep in the back of his head. Doesn't want to risk injury heading into his quarterfinal matchup in the CWC against Tyler Bate next weekend. But there is nothing Ricochet can do tonight. Well, he's in there with a big man like Omos, and there's Ricochet able to somehow use his weight to get Omos off his feet. And here's the one and only. Can't hold back, gotta go for the home run. There's the moonsault. And going for the early victory, but Omos gets the shoulder up. But that is what Ricochet's gotta do. Uses high risk, high reward. His high flying abilities to his advantage. And Omos can't underestimate Ricochet. Can't take his eye off the ball until he hears a three. That may be the detriment to the Nigerian Giant tonight. Ricochet, you see, struggling to build momentum in this match. Saw a sign of life there off the takedown into the moonsault. But it's only just a matter of moments before Omos is back to his feet. And now he's got Ricochet in this bear hug, dead center of CFG Bank Arena. And imagine the momentum will be shot right down the drain of Ricochet heading into his matchup with Tyler Bate next Saturday afternoon if Omos can get the victory tonight. As we are mentioning, oh wait a minute, Ricochet tilt to whirl, head scissors, down goes the big man. You can only keep Omos down for so long. You see the size differential between these two. And Ricochet is struggling to get things going here in Baltimore. Oh, Omos could be going for that choke slam. He used against Luke Gallows a few weeks ago on SmackDown to pick up a victory. Ricochet able to avoid it, and a shooting star press into the cover. And again, and only a one count. Only got the one there, but this is what Ricochet's got to do. He's got to stay moving. Can't let Omos catch him. As there he goes there, springboard moonsault. Can't let Omos slow him down tonight. Catch him and squash him. Keep him grounded. Ricochet can't afford that. Ricochet's got to go to the air. But that doesn't mean it's always going to work out as he just found out right there. Man, Ricochet was starting to build some momentum. The shooting star, the springboard. And Omos is just, you know, Omos is a man who's got a lot of agility in there for a big man, able to get out of the way on that moonsault. And it does not pay Ricochet dividends. Getting hung up on the top of the apron, the hardest part of the ring as we know. This is not where Ricochet wants to be on the outside of the squared circle with Omos. I mean, it's already dangerous being in between the ropes with Omos, but being at ringside, not gonna help Ricochet's cause. Of course, it was at ringside a few weeks back on SmackDown, where Omos ambushed Ricochet, as if this big man needs to be ambushing anybody from behind. But he ambushed Ricochet, was ragdolling him all across ringside in front of the announce table, laid down the gauntlet for this rematch tonight at no mercy. And the Lesso Moss once again taking his eye off the ball. And I'm telling you, that may be the detriment 
to Omos tonight. If he underestimates Ricochet, a man who has beaten him in the past, Omos may be sensing another defeat tonight. Nice takedown by Ricochet. Now the human highlight reel trying to keep things going as he heads to the top. Phoenix Splash! The same move that won him a first round bout in the CWC, but Omos's tall legs reward him that time in the rope break. Omos didn't even have to move. The foot just happened to be under the ropes and it saved him there. And now an STO, which is going to hurt harder than most when somebody the size of Omos is coming squashing down on you. This is one hell of a way to kick things off tonight. Your SmackDown exclusive live premiere event. No mercy here at the CFG Bank Arena in Baltimore. It's been a hot and heavy buildup over the last few weeks. The SmackDown locker room has been at turmoil. A lot of those issues going to come to a head tonight. Here live at No Mercy. Now Omos, double backbreaker on Ricochet. Now going for the cover, Omos desperate for victory tonight. Hungry to see Ricochet fall on defeat, but the one and only still has got a little fuel left in the tank. Just because he's got fuel in the tank, just because the adrenaline may be pumping, doesn't mean it's a smart idea for Ricochet to keep moving. And it doesn't mean he's not just delaying the inevitable Oh man, Omos going for a choke slam, dead center of the squared circle. And there's no getting up from that unless Omos forces Ricochet to his feet. Oh wow, big time counter by the one and only. Where is he getting this side of life? And now somehow Ricochet's heading to the top. Mood salt from the heavens. Go for the cover, live for the moment, but it's only a one. How did Ricochet get the life to fight out from after, I should say, that choke slam? Get Omos off his feet. Now he's got him dazed. Might not have got the victory, but certainly is back in the momentum column. Omos is on the outside, and the big man's on spaghetti legs. Ricochet looking to knock him over like dominoes right now, taking things to the sky. My goodness. What a matchup to kick things off tonight at No Mercy. Ricochet now coming off the apron, dropping the elbow. These two men up in the ante from their matchup last month at Sacramento on SmackDown. And now Ricochet going for the Acai Moon Salt. Must have been watching his 1996 Cruiserweight action as of late from WCW because Ricochet's taking a page out of the good old Cruiserweight book. Omos is down, and Ricochet may be able to keep him there. Taking things to the air time and time again. It's going to take a lot out of the one and only, but it's his only way to get a victory tonight. Oh, but Omos had him scouted that time. Got the knees up. Ricochet hit a beautiful Pele kick, but went to the well too many times with that shooting star, and Omos going to make him pay for it. Oh, my goodness. Talk about making him pay. Moss sees this matchup tonight, tonight excuse me, as a way to get himself in line as future championship opportunities may arise on SmackDown. Omos wants to see his name in the lights, his name in the win column here in Baltimore. Realizes the popularity that Ricochet has certainly been acquiring on SmackDown, especially in the last few months. And Omos wants to reap the rewards of it tonight. Well, that's another close call, but Ricochet still survives. I don't know what it's going to take as Ricochet rolls to the outside, just trying to create some distance between himself and the Nigerian Giant in the midst of this David vs. Goliath collision here tonight. A big time close on the outside. Ricochet is down. Ricochet is certainly hurt. And I don't know how much more adrenaline could fuel him in this matchup. Amos is like a shark who smells blood in the water. Oh, wait a minute. Don't count out Ricochet. Spring to his feet, but Amos, look at that! Double-handed slam. And you can count all the way to Chicago tomorrow night. But Ricochet says otherwise. Getting the shoulder off the canvas. Omos can't believe it. What a freaking match here tonight at the SmackDown exclusive live premier event. No mercy. I don't think Omos was expecting this kind of fight out of Ricochet. I don't think Omos expected the match to go the distance in the way it has. Ricochet's hurt though, and Omas 
is willing to keep the foot on the gas pedal if it means victory. Trying to ragdoll him there just like he did a few weeks ago. Wow, my goodness! A poison rana by Ricochet on the Nigerian giant Omas! And the tilt to whirl. Omas goes down. Omas rolls to the outside. The human highlight reel going for the corkscrew, but Omas moves out of the way. Every time Ricochet wows us with a high risk maneuver and starts to build momentum, the Nigerian giant pulls the rug out from under his feet. Man, win, lose, or draw for either one of these superstars. The fans that have sold out the CFG Bank Arena tonight in Baltimore are certainly getting a treat in your opening bout. And so much still to be decided tonight. Multiple championships and personal scores to be settled. As Ricochet trying to send Omas possibly into the ring post there, trying to create some distance, and Omas hit the barricade. Speaks volumes to the heart and the will of Ricochet to be able to take Omas down like that, especially this late in the matchup. Omas may have his eggs scrambled on the outskirts of the ring. The referee's at a count of nine right now, and Omas getting back in just at the very last second. Ricochet almost scoring the count out victory, but Omas has still got fight. And the one and only taking things to the air again. Omas is down, Ricochet. Is heading to the top rope. 6.30 on the Nigerian Giant. Into the cover. And no! Omas gets the shoulder up. Oh, but look at Ricochet. Not batting an eye. Heading back to the top. And another 6.30. Will the second time be a charm for the one and only? It is. Man, oh man, what a matchup to kick things off tonight in Baltimore, Maryland at no mercy. Omas wanted this rematch and Ricochet certainly gave him a fight. Omas lit a fire under the one and only that he was unable to put out tonight in your opening bout. Here is your winner, Ricochet. Next Saturday afternoon, in the quarterfinals of the Cruiserweight Classic, Ricochet meets Monday Night Raw's big strong boy, Tyler Bate. But tonight, Ricochet will soak in the pageantry of winning this matchup here tonight in Baltimore. Omas gave him a fight, but in the end, the heart and the soul was just too much for Omas to handle. And the human highlight reel leaves with victory. Coming up next here at No Mercy, the WWE Cruiserweight Championship of the World is set to be defended as Alpha Academy's Chad Gable challenges the Emperor of Lucha Libre, Santos Escobar. Gable has been picking up steam on Friday Night SmackDown as of late, earning victories over Legado Del Fantasma's Cruz Del Toro, as well as Joaquin Wilde. Gable stamped his spot as the number one contender and earned this upcoming bout with Santos Escobar. Santos, of course, got some momentum back for Legado Del Fantasma, as just two weeks ago, he pinned Gable's tag team partner Otis inside the squared circle. But tonight is where victory matters most. Who is going to leave Baltimore, sporting the gold of the cruiserweight division around their waist? We find out right now. is scheduled for one fall and is for the WWE Cruiserweight Championship. The first championship of four set to be decided here tonight at No Mercy and the WWE Cruiserweight Championship of the World is on the line. And here comes the number one contender, Alpha Academy's Master Chad Gable. One of my most interesting facts I could state about this match is that the champion and challenger are two men who have really not only rise the ranks of superstardom on SmackDown, but have become almost fan favorites over the last few months for no other reason but their in-ring abilities and the effort that they give from bell to bell. Gable and Santos Escobar, two men you can always call on to tear down that house. And tonight they go one-on-one, -on -one. the championship's on the line. Respect is there, but it goes out the window when the gold is at stake and only one man can leave the CFG Bank Arena as the Cruiserweight Champion. 
Chad Gable looks locked and loaded as he has earned this matchup tonight and doesn't want to see it go to waste. But here comes the Cruiserweight Champion of the World himself, the leader of Legado del Fantasma, the Emperor of Lucha Libre, Santos Escobar. A man who is in the midst of his third reign as the Cruiserweight Champion, held it once before in NXT, had a reign last year, 2022, and has been riding the wave this year ever since May 14th at Vengeance where he defeated Rey Mysterio. Santos Escobar gonna go back to his popularity really rising in the WWE Universe. Well, a lot of that came in his multiple month battle with the Master, Master of the 619 in Rey Mysterio, a feud that concluded back in June at King of the Ring in Philadelphia in that extreme Lucha Rules match. Escobar has since retained the gold over JD McDonough, has been sitting back and watching the Cruiserweight Classic. Of course, the winner of that tournament will earn a title matchup in the near future. But tonight, Escobar turns all of his attention to the number one contender at ringside in Chad Gable. These two veterans, these two experienced talents, these two fan favorites set to lock horns for the Cruiserweight Championship of the World. Let's send things down to the ring for your official pre-match introduction. Introducing the challenger from Minneapolis, Minnesota, weighing in at 202 pounds, Chad Gable. And his opponent from Mexico City, Mexico, weighing in at 200 pounds, he is the WWE Cruiserweight Champion, Santos Escobar. As we mentioned, it's the first championship match of four here tonight, the SmackDown exclusive live premiere event. Still to come, the Women's Championship of the World is on the line, the United States title, and of course the World Heavyweight title in your main event. But that is the goal that is at stake as the champion hands over the title and the challenger takes a gaze at it. Cruiserweight Championship, a very prestigious championship going throughout the history of WWE and of course WCW, and we are in Baltimore, Maryland tonight a place that has a lot of WCW history in it, and I'm sure Chad Gable and Santos Escobar look to do that history and lineage proud here tonight at No Mercy. As we kick off this matchup, we saw in the video package beforehand, Chad Gable earned this matchup with some recent victories over two-thirds of Legado del Fantasma. And wait a minute here, Santos Escobar. Oh, he's got his eyes locked on Gable early, going for the two-pick and hero to the outside. My goodness! Tope Suicida, excuse me, I'm so excited I can't even get the move right. Nonetheless, the suicide dive will go with that by Santos Escobar to the outside. Gable goes down in the first 30 seconds of this matchup. If that doesn't tell you how motivated the champion is to come out, steal the show, and retain his title tonight, well, I don't know what will. As we were about to mention, Chad Gable earned this matchup by defeating Joaquin Wilde and Cruz del Toro. Going for the three-peat tonight, but of course that is not going to be an easy three-peat. Certainly easier said than done. And you're in there with Santos Escobar. Of course, Escobar defeating Chad Gable's tag team partner in Otis two weeks ago on SmackDown as well. Both these men coming out here alone tonight. No Legado del Fantasma, no Otis in the corners. Going toe for toe to see who the better man is and who will be the Cruiserweight Champion. Gable back in the ring, and wait a minute, Escobar can't turn his back to the number one contender because he almost stole the victory there. Gable wants that Cruiserweight Championship and is willing to get it by any means necessary. Double underhook, full Nelson German. Great maneuver by Gable. Only getting the one count there, but those near falls will certainly get in the psyche of the Cruiserweight Champion. Chad Gable. Jumping Escobar with the DDT. Gable's got so many tricks to beat you. That is one of the reasons he was able to defeat two-thirds of Legado del Fantasma in recent weeks. He almost had Escobar again, only a one count, but as we mentioned, those near falls will certainly get in the head of the champion, possibly force him to be a little bit more desperate in the matchup and cause him to make a mistake. As Gable goes for another one off the belly to belly, only a two count that time, but two is better than one, and Gable's one step closer to becoming the Cruiserweight champion. 
Matt Gable has challenged for this Cruiserweight Championship in the past, unfortunately unsuccessful. And Chad Gable giving his sentiments to Baltimore, Maryland in his pursuit of the Cruiserweight gold this evening. Oh, Escobar with a nice shot to the ribcage. Escobar and Gable, both these men. You know, we said it about Chad Gable, it, it can go both ways. They both have several ways to beat you. Escobar's got that phantom driver. He likes to drop his opponents. Ribcage first on the top rope. We've seen a win with that before. Off the double knees in the corner. It's enough to take the knock the wind out of you, I should say. Possibly crack a rib cage. Chad Gable, former Olympian. Santos Escobar knows that, knows Gable can go the distance. Decorated tag team superstar throughout his WWE career, but a man who was looking for his first singles gold tonight in Baltimore. Escobar gets the two count, now drops the leg. Another maneuver that we have seen Santos execute to perfection, especially throughout this Cruiserweight Championship reign, as he comes from the top rope to the outside, and a beautiful missile drop kick to the shoulder of Chad Gable. Take out the shoulder, he may take out the arm and some of the strength of Gable, which will not allow him to perform a lot of those suplex variations that Gable likes to perfect, especially the chaos theory in the corner, which earned him the one, two, three over Joaquin Wilde and Cruz del Toro in recent weeks. Taking things back inside the squared circle, Escobar looking to get the one, two, three tonight and prove that he is the best of the best in the cruiserweight division. Gable is down and has not had an answer for Santos the last few minutes as the champion scales the ropes and waits the challenger to get to his feet and he hits a beautifully delivered cross body and it once again goes for the cover and Gable gets the shoulder up. A lot of near falls in the early going of this matchup. Santos looking to take a leg it looked like there but Chad Gable is probably the last superstar on the SmackDown roster we want to do that with. As we mentioned former Olympian that coming in wrestling. And Gable not afraid to take things to the ground if Santos Escobar wants to play those games. Luckily that misstep for Santos Escobar allowed Chad Gable to get back into this thing. A nice unique takeover that Chad Gable has used to perfection in the past, sending Escobar into the corner. Gable likes to perform that chaos theory in the corner, chooses not to go for it yet, instead a leapfrog to the champion. Here's Escobar. Off the counter, you can never take your eye off the champion. Tit for tat in this matchup. Oh, hey, hey, wait a minute. Escobar's got his foot on the ropes, and Gable getting the shoulder up. Well, we said these two men have really gained the respect of the WWE Universe in recent months, but that doesn't mean they're not afraid to use an underhanded tactic if need be. We've seen Legato del Fantasma use the numbers in the past. How we've seen Gable and Otis use the numbers in the past. Tonight it's all about the Cruiserweight Championship. Who wants it more and who is the better of the two? It's Gable might be a little fired up off that kick out. Saw Santos Escobar had on the foot of the ropes, not taking Kylie to what could be taken as disrespect. Escobar now on the outside. It's Chad Gable dropping the axe, or I should say tried to, as Escobar avoids it. Now on the outside, eats the knees of the Cruiserweight Champion. Santos Escobar, in a snap of the fingers, turns the momentum back to Legado del Fantasma territory. Escobar now going to take his time getting back inside the ring. And, you know, Escobar could easily retain the title tonight via countout. I'm sure he wouldn't mind as long as he leaves the CFG Bank Arena tonight with the Cruiserweight Championship by his side. And Chad Gable giving these sentiments to the Baltimore, Maryland crowd who... In my ears seems to be a little bit more behind Santos Escobar here tonight. Champions on the top rope, Chad Gable, however, on his tail. Nice shot to the jaw, and Chad Gable, one of the strongest superstars in the SmackDown locker room, shows us why with a superplex from the heavens. And now Gable into the cover, looking to become the new Cruiserweight Champion at no mercy, but Escobar says not yet. As we have already discussed tonight, we have been in the midst of the Cruiserweight Classic. The winner of that tournament will earn a future shot at the Cruiserweight title. Could it be one of these men holding the title the time the tournament wraps? Gable wants to see his name on the plate of the championship. Off the triple verticals, into the cover. And he almost had him again. Another close call. And Chad Gable starting to lose his marbles a little bit. 
frustrated at the fact that Escobar continues to get the shoulder off the canvas. Abel's got to keep his head on straight. He's got to remember this is a man who pinned Rey Mysterio two falls to zip in the Extreme Lucha Rules match back in June. Escobar tough as nails, willing to go the distance by any means necessary, wants to retain the Cruiserweight title. Not able to score the pinfall off the triple suplexes, but now looking to beat down the champion, crush the win, crush the soul, crush the dreams of the Emperor of Lucha Libre. Escobar rolling to the outside after those kicks right to the chest. Might have had the wind knocked out of him. I think this is honestly smart. Well, I was going to say smart for Gable to maybe stay inside the ring, allow Escobar to rest technically, but Gable would also get some rest. But Chad Gable going to keep his foot, his sole of the boot, on the gas pedal. And now do it off the apron with the Larry and Escobar counters and a nice head scissors takedown. Beautifully done by the Cruiserweight champion. But now Gable with a forearm. We can see this championship match turn into a brawl in no time. Escobar down once more, and Chad Gable back inside the squared circle. Escobar may have got a reverse on the outside, but not able to pay him dividends, as now Gable off the middle buckle, off of Brett's rope. But Escobar once more gets the shoulder off the canvas, and every time Escobar kicks out, you see Chad Gable losing it a little bit more each time. He better stay focused or Escobar is going to capitalize on that frustration, possibly cause Gable to make a mistake. And Santos Escobar may retain the championship off of it. Nice backdrop. Alex for the German, but he's still got the arms locked. The hands hooked. Turns it around. Suplex, what a combination maneuver there by the Cruiserweight champion. Now Escobar has got Gable on the shoulders. Fireman's carry position. We're going to talk about knocking the wind out of you. Throat first on the top rope could certainly do it. And Gable in the corner and again with the double knees. Escobar is looking to take out the wind of Gable and catch him long enough for the three count. Oh, wait a minute. Escobar's got Gable on his back, turns him over to the belly, and we may be in Baltimore, but Escobar's going for the Boston Crab tonight. A submission hold, which is a rare occurrence out of the arsenal of Escobar, may sense but Escobar's mental game is coming into this matchup, realizing he's got to pull out some deep tricks to try to defeat Gable. Only did him so well. Obviously, the matchup progresses, but he may have done some damage on the number one contender, who's trying to get rolling. But Escobar rolls to the outside, at least for the moment, to try to cut him off. We easily see this match start to go back and forth as we get into deep waters in the later rounds of this contest. Chad Gable taking... Escobar down once again with that knee to the gut and into the bridge. Got one of the legs hooked and only a one count that time. It certainly shows you the intestinal fortitude of these two superstars and their will to leave the CFG Bank Arena as the true cruiserweight champion of the world. Escobar is dazed and you see Gable's fatigue starting to set in as well. Not as much enthusiasm, but Gable going for the kill. Chaos Theory. He's gonna do it. New champion, no. Escobar gets the shoulder off the canvas. The same maneuver that defeated Joaquin Wilde and Cruz del Toro is not enough to keep down the head honcho of Lucha Libre. It's Santos Escobar, and Gable would have just made a misstep going for the elbow off the top. And that just shows you how Santos Escobar has continued to be leaps and bounds above everyone in the Cruiserweight division. The reason he holds the gold, but Chad Gable not gonna give up until he hears a bell. Looking for his rocky story. Tonight's set a mating in Maryland. Off the top again, Escobar might have kicked out of the chaos theory, but was it just off adrenaline? Does he truly have enough left in the tank to outlast Chad Gable? Runs through Gable's maneuver there. Once again, these two men just going from pillar to post. It's like two energy circuits crashing in the middle. And a tilt to world backbreaker that Eddie Guerrero would be proud of. Escobar's got to get back into this. That chaos theory might have changed the trajectory of this match. Certainly did some damage to the champion. He might have survived, but for how much longer? Gable knocked off the apron again, and the champion is on his tail at ringside. 
Santos Escobar, as we mentioned, could easily retain the championship via count out tonight, but Gable cannot win it out there. Gable's got to possibly try to use his surroundings to beat down Santos Escobar, take the life out from under him, but he's got to get the three count in between the ropes. The match this has been thus far for the Cruiserweight title as Gable sends Santos back inside the square circle. Now heads to the top again. Gable's had about 50-50 luck taking things to the air in this matchup, and once again, it does not work out for Gable as Santos Escobar met him there. Gable goes for a ride off the top, and now Escobar going for the Phantom Driver, and it hits near the center of the canvas into the three count, and that's enough to retain the Cruiserweight Championship of the World. Chad Gable pushing Santos Escobar to his limits tonight, almost leaving as the champion. As you see in the replay, the triple suplexes, the chaos theory, some of the maneuvers that Gable has found success with in the past, but not tonight here in Baltimore. Phantom driver for the victory for the Emperor. Here's your winner, and still the WWE Cruiserweight Champion, Santos Escobar. Well, Alpha Academy's Chad Gable will live to fight another day. But tonight, here at No Mercy, the reign of the Emperor of Lucha Libre rolls on. He has turned away some of the best in the Cruiserweight division. Now he awaits the winner of the CWC in a couple of weeks' time. But as for tonight at No Mercy, still your Cruiserweight Champion of the World, Santos Escobar! Well, in moments here at No Mercy, we will witness a collision that has certainly been brewing for a long time now between the EST Bianca Belair and the ballsy, badass Shotzi. Remember earlier this year at WrestleMania, Shotzi was in need of a tag team partner to challenge for the women's tag team gold. She called upon a woman who she had gained a mutual respect for in Bianca Belair. The brand new duo left WrestleMania, the brand new champions. But it was when they lost the gold that the team quickly soured. Shortly after, the two women were pinned against each other in a Money in the Bank qualifying match. And after a competitive fight, the Lair left the victor on that night. However, that only worsened the relationship of the two. And things fell apart in a drastic matter when Shotzi attacked the Lair from behind just a few weeks later. A sneak attack that Bianca has not forgotten. After Belair spent weeks away, she came back raring to pick a fight with Shotzi, and now they square off once more here tonight. A matchup that is no doubt their most personal one yet. Belair seeks payback, but Shotzi seeks to cut her ties with the EST for good and prove she is the better of these two women. A personal score to be settled between the ballsy badass Shotzi and the EST. Bianca Belair has no mercy live from the CFG Bank Arena in Baltimore, Maryland. This SmackDown exclusive live premiere event continues. The following contest is scheduled for one fall. Making her way to the ring from Oakland, California, Shotzi. Well, Shotzi made her bed, but she may have to sleep in it tonight. She wanted to cut ties with Bianca Belair. She got her wish, but it's put up or shut up tonight at no mercy. Defeat Bianca Belair and prove that you are the better woman, or fall to the EST and prove you made the wrong decision. Shotzi has beat Bianca in the past, but Bianca has the winning record in matchups against Shotzi. Four singles matches between the two over the last year. Bianca has won three of them. Shotzi only won, dating back to the 2022 SummerSlam. And as you saw in the video package moments ago, these two former women's tag team champions, a team that was forged through mutual respect in the competition inside the squared circle. And after they lost those titles, it proved to be a very paper relationship, if you will. Easily fragile and easily broken. Shotzi broke it off as soon as she possibly could after Bianca Belair not only was the one pinned to lose the tag team titles, but also defeated Shotzi for a spot in Money in the Bank. But tonight, Bianca Belair looks for payback after Shotzi laid her out well over a month ago on SmackDown. So who will be the victor? We find out in moments.
the EST of the WWE, Bianca Belair, live and in living color as she struts down the aisle here at No Mercy. Bianca has already had a decorated WWE career, former women's champion, former tag team champion, and that is something I am sure Bianca has her sights on doing yet again, which is holding championship gold. But before she can get to that, she needs to take care of this score to settle first with the ballsy badass Shotzi. Obviously, there is a deeper meaning between these two women. It's about proving who is the better woman, proving who is the best, proving who is better than their opposer. But this matchup could easily put either women in line for a future shot at the WWE Women's Championship. A title that will be defended later on this evening here in Baltimore, but here we go with Bianca versus Shotzi as Bianca tries to come out of the gate, and that time she hits it, knocking Shotzi off her feet. I wouldn't expect any collar and elbow tie-ups, any headlock takeovers or chain wrestling in this matchup. Bianca has come to Baltimore to fight and to get her payback over Shotzi, and so far so good as she has got Shotzi down. Bianca is fired up tonight. This is a fire that has been lit under the EST for months on SmackDown, and she finally gets her chance to put this business with Shotzi behind her. Into the quick cover, and Shotzi gets the shoulder up, but could you imagine how embarrassing and deflating it would be for Shotzi if Bianca came out and beat her so fast tonight? It would really say a lot about Shotzi's decision to turn her back on Bianca, but if there's one thing we know about Shotzi, Hard as nails inside of the ring as she just proved right there off that pop-up tornado. Take nothing away from the ballsy badass. Former champion in her own right. Former two-time champ champion, I should say, won it, winning it last year at SummerSlam against Bianca Belair and then last year at Survivor Series against Asuka. Former women's tag team champion as we've already documented this evening, but Shotzi wants to get back in the limelight and this time she's doing it her way. Cutting ties with Bianca Belair. Take no prisoner's attitude the ballsy badass has had. We have seen her gain victories over Alaya, over the woman who will challenge Shayna Baszler later tonight and Candice LeRae. But Shotzi wants, or I should say needs this victory over Bianca here tonight. Bianca, we don't talk about her having a mean streak. Look no further than the ballsy badass ever since she gained the momentum in this match. She's looking to hurt Bianca tonight. It's not just about the pinfall, it's about proving her worth on Friday Night SmackDown. Bianca having a roll to the outside, trying to create some distance, get a breather, and a Shotzi is fired up. But I think the ballsy badass's wheels are turning here in the CFG Bank Arena with the suicide dive, taking Bianca Belair off her feet. Bianca's down and Shotzi is not letting her foot off the gas pedal as she falls over the Saido on the outside of the ring. A violent maneuver out of that woman in the green. We expected nothing less out of Bianca Belair and Shotzi tonight. There I say one of the best feuds in the women's division over the last few years have been these two women. And tonight could be the end of it all depending on who gets the victory. Sasha just trying to injure Bianca Belair in this matchup, fighting her on the outside, knowing she can't pin Bianca or tap her out on the outskirts, but could certainly do some damage. Bianca Belair is not looking to go out that way, especially on a countout. Bianca wants to hurt Shotzi tonight, wants to get her payback, her retribution for that embarrassing assault, and wants to prove she is the better woman once and for all. As we mentioned, the multiple meetings between these two, four singles matches over the last Two years here in the WWE. Three of them have gone to the woman with the whip in Bianca Belair as Shotzi down and she is hurting. That hair of the EST is a weapon and Shotzi is finding that out firsthand. See the fatigue already starting to set in on Bianca Belair. She really did a number. I should say Shotzi really did a number on Bianca Belair a few min minutes ago, but. Bianca going to keep fighting as you always need to from bell to bell. Shotzi is down. I don't know if Shotzi expected this kind of fight from Bianca tonight, but a big time cross body off the middle rope. And by the oh man, Bianca's going for that spear, it looked like again, or at least that takedown, but Shotzi countering with a mean knee to the dome. 
Now, wait a minute here. Shotzi delivering that badass DDT. Head first goes Bianca, and that may be all she wrote, but the EST gets the shoulder up. Close call. Well, Shotzi's not done, going for big time slice spread inside the ring. Shotzi is fired up. It all goes hand in hand with what we mentioned. Not just looking for the victory, even though that is a large proportion of this matchup. We're gonna hurt the opposer. Payback on the line. But Shotzi going to the well with too many maneuvers may have cost her, because now it's Bianca Belair who sends Shotzi to the ring post. Shoulder first, that's gonna hurt like hell tomorrow morning. Really speaks volumes of how much Bianca wants this fight tonight, how long she's been waiting for it, how much she wants to prove she is the better woman. Outlasting that badass DDT followed by the sliced bread and now finds herself back in control at least for the moment in this matchup. Oh my goodness, another whip. I think they heard that down the street in Baltimore. Now Bianca going behind. I think we know what comes next. A little shout out to Beth Phoenix with the Glam Slam. And that could be all she wrote. Bianca's won matches with that match in the past, but Shotzi has felt it before. She's survived before, and she survives again. Bianca Belair and Shotzi throwing everything in the kitchen sink at each other. In the midst of our third matchup on hand tonight, the CFG Bank Arena, there's a counter by the Ballsy Badass. All by a kick going for the forearm. Bian Bianca with a counter. Kick of her own to the gut. Now look at the power of Bianca Belair, one of the strongest women in the division. Taking down Shotzi. Shotzi is reeling in pain, and as we mentioned earlier, Shotzi made the bed, but she may have to sleep in it tonight. Bianca came out fired up and motivated, as we know she would. But I don't know if Shotzi was expecting this level of fight from the EST. She gets sent into the corner, and Bianca Belair the wheels are spinning right now. What has the EST got in mind? Once again, the strength on full display. Press slam to the Bullsy Badass. And that went to the cover. And Shepsi gets the shoulder up. And you hear the resounding, this is awesome chance for the sold out capacity crowd here at the CFG Bank Arena, who are loving this war between Bianca and Shotzi. As Bianca now, a little bit of roll reversal, and she's the one taking things to the air with the Topekin hero over the top. The athleticism, the strength, but now Bianca Belair is looking to up the ante. This is not a no disqualification match, but the table is here, and the announce table may be about to be put in play by the EST. Shotzi may rue the day she ever turned her back on Bianca. Oh my goodness, power bomb through the announce table. Bianca Belair is headset on revenge tonight. Baltimore is coming unglued for the absolute unhinged Belair as she sends Shotzi back inside the squared circle. Off the power bomb through the announce table. Looking to go behind. Somehow a reversal by the Bullsy Badass. Now Shotzi trapping Bianca's arms with the German right on the back of the dome. Maybe a sense of urgency with the adrenaline running through the veins of Bianca, or I should say Shotzi right now. How she just got dropped to the announce table and was able to survive. Speaks volumes. And now another badass DDT. Shotzi going for the cover. Shotzi's gonna get the victory. Shotzi did it here tonight. Wow, what a display of athleticism, of will to succeed, intestinal fortitude by these two women. You may not like Shotzi's attitude as of late, but you gotta give credit where credit's due. Bianca threw everything in the kitchen sink at the ballsy badass, even the power bomb through the announce table. But in the end, Shotzi just wanted it more, and Shotzi found a way to win and leave Baltimore with her hand raised high. Here is your winner.
Bianca Belair will live to fight another day, and I'm sure the score is yet to be settled in the mind of the EST. But when she wakes up from that DDT and realizes she has been defeated, Bianca's gonna have to go back to the drawing board and try to run this thing back with the ballsy badass. Shotzi wanted to cut the ties. She did just that, and she proved her worth with a big time victory over Bianca Belair tonight at No Mercy. The next time we come your way with a live premiere event, a special joint production of Monday Night Raw and Friday Night SmackDown, we are going international. Cardiff, Wales, Principality Stadium. It is WWE Clash at the Castle. And it is coming your way Sunday night, October the 22nd, live at 5 p.m. Eastern Time. Don't miss this international extravaganza as Raw and SmackDown present Clash at the Castle. That is right, ladies and gentlemen. The next time we come your way for a massive live premiere event, Sunday night, October the 22nd, Principality Stadium in Cardiff, Wales, for the 2023 edition of WWE Clash at the Castle. Over the last five weeks, we have witnessed the Cruiserweight Classic Tournament play out, but the quarterfinals are set to continue next Saturday afternoon as Monday Night Raw's big strong boy, Tyler Bate, takes on Friday Night SmackDown's human highlight reel, Ricochet. And also signed for next Saturday afternoon, two men who are gonna team up in moments here at No Mercy. It is Dominic Mysterio, one-on-one -on -one with the whole shebang, Johnny Gargano in the quarterfinals. The Cruiserweight Classic Tournament continues live one week from now at 3 p.m. Eastern Time at Hammerstein Ballroom in New York City. It is time to continue No Mercy live from the CFG Bank Arena here in Baltimore. And a big time six-man tag team matches on the horizon. A lot of interesting factors are at play. But as you just saw, next week, Dominic and Johnny Gargano will go head to head. But tonight, they stand on the same side with a common enemy in Imperium. The Mysterios rocking the purple and gold of the Baltimore Ravens as they walk down the aisle here at No Mercy. The following is a six man tag team match. And at a combined weight, of 375 pounds, the team of Dominic and Ray Mysterio. This situation really caught a fire when Gunther powerbombed Johnny Gargano through the announce table a few weeks on SmackDown, and then added some insult to injury with a powerbomb and a stacked-up victory inside of the ring. Johnny Gargano wanted to even the score, and he called upon two men who have had their own issues with Imperium throughout the summer, that being Dominic and Rey Mysterio. Mysterio had challenged Gunther for the United States title back in July during his reign as champion, and Dominic Mysterio and Rey have met Imperium in both tag and singles matches in the past. But here comes the tag team partner, the whole shebang! And their partner from Cleveland, Ohio, weighing in at 199 pounds, Johnny Gargano! An NXT Grand Slam champion, a former one-time WWE World Tag Team Champion. And next Saturday afternoon, one of the participants still standing in the quarterfinals of the Cruiserweight Classic. But tonight, Johnny Gargano and Dominic Mysterio cannot be thinking ahead to the CWC. They need to stay focused at the task at hand, which is the very intimidating presence of the trio known as Imperium. And it was Johnny Gargano's idea, knowing even though he would face Dominic Mysterio in the CWC, that he could trust Dominic, as well as his father, the Hall of Famer Rey Mysterio, to go to battle alongside Gargano in this war against Imperium. Big time six-man tag team matchup signed from the, some of the all-stars of Friday Night SmackDown here tonight at No Mercy. The Mysterio, the Mysterios and the Gargano set for action, but here comes Giovanni Vinci, Ludwig Kaiser, and the Ring General Gunther Imperium is in live and in living color 
here in Baltimore, Maryland at No Mercy. And at a combined weight of 737 pounds, Gunter Ludwig Kaiser and Giovanni Vinci Imperia. Gunther looked at that match with Johnny Gargano a few weeks ago on SmackDown as a chance to send a statement to the rest of the Friday Night SmackDown locker room that even though Gunther suffered his first loss since joining the Blue Brand back at SummerSlam to the American Nightmare Cody Rhodes, also in the process losing the United States Championship, that even though he lost that matchup, he is still one of the most dominating, intimidating presence to ever step foot inside the squared circle. And he has passed that motivation off to Ludwig Kaiser and Giovanni Vinci as we saw firsthand just 24 hours ago on SmackDown when Kaiser pinned Rey Mysterio in one-on-one -on -one action in the middle of the ring. Momentum on the side of Imperium coming into this matchup. But there are three soldiers ready to go to war at ringside. Looking to prove that Imperium aren't the only superstars in the SmackDown locker room worth pushing some superstars around and get what they want. I'll tell you what, Gunther, there's been something in the eyes of the ring general ever since SummerSlam. He's motivated to get back to the top. It could start here tonight, but he cannot discount the efforts of the Mysterio family and certainly Johnny Gargano. Here we go with this six-man tag team match here at No Mercy. And Gunther not wasting any time hitting the chop and hitting the drop, I should say, on Mysterio. Rey Mysterio, the Hall of Famer. There's one thing about Ray, it's been well documented throughout his Hall of Fame career. One of the biggest hearts in the business. It's not about the size of the dog in the fight, it's about the size of the heart in the dog. And that is what Ray Mysterio has made a career off of. But right now, his son Dominic is doing his best impression of his father, but Gunther sizing him up with a big boot. Dominic Mysterio looking to do one good for Ray and Johnny Gargano here tonight. Oh, Guther going for the boot, and Dominic going for the drop kick for no avail. And another shot by Guther. The ring general coming out tonight swinging. No waste in motion, not looking for the collar and elbow, not looking for the headlock takeover like we talked about in the Bianca Belair Shotzi brawl moments ago here at No Mercy. Guther wants to send a message to the SmackDown locker room. And he is on the hunt for championship gold and on the hunt to be the most successful superstar to ever grace the Blue, brand, blue Brand's ring. And Guther sending Dominic up and over the top rope. Oh, wait a minute. What's Guther got in mind? This is not good. Dropping Dominic Mysterio in the hardest part of the squared circle. The mean streak from the ring general on full display in the first few minutes of this six-man tag. We've even yet to see a tag to Giovanni Vinci and Ludwig Kaiser. The ring general could be willing to do this all by himself tonight. Oh, there's a tag to Ludwig Kaiser. Same thing, Imperium just looking for the victory tonight. As Kaiser trying to go low with Dominic, but Mysterio turns him over. Kaiser just 24 hours ago, as we mentioned, pinning Dominic's father right inside the ring, and he might be about to pin the son off the crucifix cover, but to no avail. Dominic getting a little chippy a moment ago, trying to fight out of Imperium territory, knocking Guther off the apron, but turning his back to Ludwig Kaiser could be a decision that Dominic comes to regret. Gotta wonder how this matchup could play into championship challenge implications in the near future. I'm sure Imperium and Ludwig Kaiser and Giovanni Vinci would love an opportunity at the World Tag Team titles. It'll be decided tomorrow night at Monday Night Raw's Unforgiven between the champions, the Judgment Day, and the challengers, the Brawling Brutes. Meanwhile, Gunther, who knows what could be on the mind of the ring general, could want another shot at Cody Rhodes for the United States title, go for the rubber match, or maybe something else in mind, but Dominic Mysterio, wait a minute, early going to the match, bringing the 619 all the way to Baltimore. Gunther down off the double boots, and Dominic scales the ropes, and a big time frog splash. Dominic's gonna pick up the biggest win of his career, but Ludwig Kaiser says otherwise. Dominic Mysterio went for the kill, and if it wasn't for Kaiser, and possibly Vinci if need be, Gunther might have just fell to an upset over Dominic. 
Melissa, we have seen Dominic Mysterio break out of his shell throughout this year. I mean, defeated his own father, Ray, when they were pinned against each other in the first round of the CWC. Hell, I bet that's a loss that Ray Mysterio is actually proud of. Seeing his, Dom seeing his son, Dominic, advance. Dominic with the tag, much needed to Rey Mysterio. You notice how Dominic, he could have easily tagged in Johnny Gargano, who may be the freshest competitor in this matchup, at least on the opposing side of Imperium, as he's yet to be tagged in. Well, you never know what's going through the mind of Dominic, as well as Gargano, heading into their first, or I should say quarterfinal match next week at the CWC. Giovanni Vinci in now. Vinci with such a diverse tool set, powerful, very agile, able to take it to the air. Hell, the first time we saw Giovanni Vinci here in WWE was back in the original CWC in 2020, excuse me, 2016. The Mysterio now, now it's Ray going for a 619, and he hits it. The Mysterios want this victory, and they want it desperate tonight. And now it's Ray heading to the top. Ray going for the frog splash, but unfortunately doesn't have the same luck as his son as he crashed and burns face first off the canvas. Vinci going for the cover, but Giovanni Vinci's got to know better. Even off a misstep by Ray, it's going to take a lot more to keep that Hall of Famer down. Mysterio and Dominic coming out tonight in the purple and gold and black. The colors of the beloved Baltimore Ravens here in Maryland, and Mysterio, like a fighter out on the field, taking out Guther. Back inside the ring and turn his eyes set to Guther, may cost him there as Giovanni Vinci knocks him off his floor. And a thank you for joining us here tonight, live for No Mercy, the SmackDown exclusive live premiere event. Been a hell of a night thus far, a lot of competitive action in this first hour from bell to bell, and still, Three championships to be decided tonight. Of course, in your main event, the World Heavyweight title will be on the line. The five-man elimination match. Cody Rhodes will defend his United States Championship against Braun Breaker. And, of course, Shayna Baszler will defend the women's title against Candice LeRae. All that's still to come tonight at No Mercy. As Guther tagged back in and looking to pummel Rey Mysterio. Don't forget, we will be live once more tomorrow night, 5 p.m. Eastern time. Tonight, it is all about the SmackDown brand. Tomorrow, it's all about the red brand. Tomorrow night, we will be in the Windy City, Chicago, Illinois, for the Unforgiven event. Mysterio going for the cover. Guther able to counter there. Wait a minute, we got six bodies, four of them not legal, inside of the ring. But as the bodies start to disperse, there's Guther taking out Ray. Johnny Gargano still got to be the freshest star in the match. See a little action at ringside right now, but it's still yet to be tagged in. Mysterio, I should say Ray to be fair, really hasn't gotten a chance, but interesting a few moments ago that Dominic chose to tag in his father instead of the man he meets next Saturday. Nonetheless, Ray is back inside of the ring. With Gunther right there, lying in wait, and delivers the boot to Ray in the corner. Gunther is starting to pick Mysterio apart. And now goes behind, and Gunther could be looking for that choke out submission hold that he's beaten so many of his opponents with. He's 15 and one on SmackDown for a reason. And one of this maneuvers is one of the reasons because of that. But Johnny Gargano breaking things up. Gargano wants to get his hands on Gunther. We'll see if he's even able to get tagged in in this match. Mysterio getting Gunther off his tail, but now the ring general once again, swinging for the home run. Baltimore Orioles should sign this guy. Not enough to get the three count. Obviously, Body's still moving in this six-man tag, but nonetheless, Gunther sent it right into the corner. Oh, look at that. You see that by Gunther. He almost challenged Johnny Gargano to get in the ring. He sent Ray dazed into the corner. Gargano tagged himself in, and Gunther got what he wanted. But he made me want to turn around here, because Gargano takes advantage with a poison Rana. Beautiful maneuver by the whole shebang. Gunther turned his back to Johnny Wrestling and Gargano made him pay. Gunther could be one step closer to finding his second defeat on Friday Night SmackDown, but there's a drop kick to get out of enemy territory. Now Gunther has no problem continuing the beatdown he started a number of weeks ago on SmackDown against Johnny Gargano. The same beatdown that led us to the six-man tag here tonight. 
Look at that, the close fist. Gunther is picking up steam right now. There has been an undeniable force in this matchup, and his name is the Ring General. Gunther, the leader of Imperium, who is out to make a statement, an emphatic one at that, and send a message to the Blue Brand locker room that Gunther ain't going nowhere. And he's still one of the most dominant superstars ever. Johnny Gargano looking to say otherwise tonight as he takes Gunther off his feet. But for how long? Gunther already fatigued. I should say Gargano already fatigued just for that minute or so with Gunther as he tags in Dominic Mysterio. And Mysterio off the ropes of the springboard and the crossbody. Gunther may be in need of a tag. Giovanni Vinci and Ludwig Kaiser wanted it. But Gunther not able to get the chance to get to Imperium territory, but there's a reversal. Dominic running right in to the short back bare elbow of Gunther. And now ragdoll on the opponent. Send the Mysterio into the ropes. Beautiful German. Cannot deny the talents of Gunther. One of the best professional wrestlers around the globe from bell to bell and his record speaks for it. This is a man who is hot off the heels of a rawness United States champion. This is a man who once held the NXT United Kingdom Championship for 870 days. No joke between the ropes is the ring general. And if Dominic didn't know already, he's certainly finding that out right now. Now wait a minute, Dominic grabs a hold of Gunther, trying to get him up, could be going for a three amigos, but Gunther's so strong, Dominic not able to hold it, and Gunther takes advantage. Going for the chop, Mysterio rolled out of it, that was a nice reversal, a nice misstep that Dominic took advantage of, and that was a drop kick of his own. Business picking up in this six-man tag, but Dominic's gotta keep this going for the Mysterio and Gargano corner. Again, Gunther. Dominic just cannot get going right now. The ring general has got the number of all three of his opponents. He did his homework coming into this matchup. Gunther is a student of the game. You gotta give him that. Another cover off the pull on Lariat. Very powerful there. And Dominic, well, Ray broke it up. You see Dominic also popping the shoulder off the canvas with not much enthusiasm. Barely able to get the shoulder up. Would be better words. Back into enemy territory. Look at the... The tank is running on E of Dominic. Fatigue is set again. He is tired, he is exhausted, he is hurt. This is what being in the ring with Gunther does to your human body. And that is why Gunther is 15 and one since joining Friday Night Smackdown. That one loss coming last month at SummerSlam and Gunther has been unhinged ever since. Another reversal there by Dominic. There's a haymaker, but again, Gunther not gonna allow it. There's Dominic with one, back and forth. Now Mysterio, rushing leg sweep, and that could be the momentum builder that finally changes the tides in this match. Dominic, oh my goodness. Well, Imperium not afraid to use an underhanded tactic if be, and that's what we just saw. Vinci knocking Dominic off the apron, Gunther taking care of Ray and Gargano, and Dominic's lifeless body is ripe for the pickings as Gunther now, oh no. Going for the power bomb on Mysterio and stacks him up with it. Sayonara, Imperium gets the victory. A message sent loud and very, very crystal clear that Imperium ain't going nowhere. And it's very fair to say that Imperium may be better than ever. After Kaiser's win last night and Imperium's victory tonight, who is stopping that trio of Giovanni Vinci, Ludwig Kaiser, and the Ring General, Gunther? Here are your winners, Ludwig Kaiser, Gunther, and Giovanni Vinci, Imperia. A great effort by Dominic Ray and Johnny Gargano. Unfortunately, a game plan that just didn't work out. And that is a scary trio right there. Kaiser, Vinci, and Gunther. Imperium's leaving Baltimore with a big time victory here at No Mercy. Well, a big fight feel approaches here tonight in Baltimore, Maryland, as the United States Championship is set to be defended. The champion, the American Nightmare Cody Rhodes, puts the gold on the line against the young, hungry, meaner than evil man known as Braun Breaker. 
It was back at SummerSlam that Cody Rhodes concluded his quest to win the red, white, blue, and gold against Guther. And ever since that night, a target has been painted on Cody's back the size of Eagles, a target that tonight's challenger is focused on hitting. Breaker laid out Cody, using his own title, throwing down the gauntlet, and letting it be known that he was at the front of the line to challenge next. Cody Rhodes isn't one who backed down from a challenge and granted Breaker his wish. Tonight is about more than just the championship for Cody. It's about teaching the young superstar some respect. But if there's one thing we know about Braun is that he is going to mow over anyone in his way to get what he wants. It's one of the future pieces of SmackDown, challenging one of the current faces of the blue brand. Cody Rhodes defends the United States Championship against Braun Breaker right here at No Mercy, up next. The following contest is scheduled for one fall and is for the WWE United States Championship. It is our second of four championships set to be decided here tonight at No Mercy. And here comes the young hungry blue chipper known as meaner than evil, Braun Breaker. The number one contender has been on a collision course. And just over the last month, he has defeated Dolph Ziggler inside a solid steel cage, ending a summer long rivalry with the show off. We have seen Braun Breaker pin the one and only Ricochet. And just last night on SmackDown, Breaker defeating the strange and unusual Dexter Loomis. But could Cody Rhodes be next on the hit list of that man right there, Braun Breaker? the former two-time NXT champion who has been on the hunt for months to win his very first title on Friday Night SmackDown. Unfortunately for Breaker, he failed to win the world title back in May. He failed to win Money in the Bank back in July. But will the third opportunity be the charm for this meaner than evil son of a bitch, Braun Breaker? He looks ready, he looks focused. Cody Rhodes better have his game face on because this is going to be a war. And here comes the prodigal son, the American Nightmare. Most importantly, the beloved holder of the United States Championship. Cody Rhodes is here in Baltimore, a city that has hosted many of the United States title bouts over the years, but the championship has changed hands on numerous occasions, sometimes in this very building. History we will document momentarily as Cody Rhodes makes his way down the aisle. That is a superstar before our beloved dies. The American Nightmare Cody Rhodes demands your attention. And there is a reason he has taken SmackDown by storm since his WWE return back at WrestleMania earlier this year. In this very building, the United States Championship has changed hands. When it was a part of the WCW, Jeff Jarrett won the title. Here in Baltimore in December of 1999, it was back in 2003 at the No Mercy event where The Big Show defeated the late great Eddie Guerrero to become the United States Champion. In this very building, Matt Hardy in 2008, Zack Ryder in 2011. Just some of the times that red, white, blue, and gold has changed hands here in this great city of Baltimore, Maryland. And could lightning strike twice once again here tonight? Braun Breaker has laid out Cody in recent weeks. He stared him down and threw down the gauntlet that he wanted the gold. But can Breaker get the job done? Or will the run of the American Nightmare prove to be just getting started? Here tonight at No Mercy. Introducing the challenger from Woodstock, Georgia, weighing in at 230 pounds, Braun Breaker. And his opponent from Atlanta, Georgia, weighing in at 220 pounds, he is the WWE United States Champion, the American Nightmare, Cody Rhodes! Oh. 
Certainly a big fight feel here at the CFG Bank Arena as the United States Heavyweight Championship of Friday Night SmackDown is on the line. The American Nightmare Cody Rhodes handing over the title for possibly the last time in this reign already. Cody successfully defended the gold against the one and only Ricochet on the SmackDown after SummerSlam. The same night Braun Breaker set his sights on Cody. But who is going to leave no mercy holding the gold? We find out right here, right now. The bell has sounded and we are underway. Got to imagine Cody Rhodes is a little bit fired up tonight. Looking to teach Braun Breaker some respect. As he takes Breaker off his feet in the early moments. As we mentioned during Braun Breaker's entrance moments ago, a man who has been on the hunt for championship gold on SmackDown for months. He pushed through McIntyre to his limit back in May at Vengeance, unfortunately failing to win the World Heavyweight title. He was one of the SmackDown participants in Money in the Bank back in June. Failed to take home the briefcase, of course. But could tonight be the night that mere than evil Braun Breaker takes the next step in his SmackDown career and leaves with the United States title. Cody Rhodes trying to make sure that that does not happen off his behalf. Classic Cody Rhodes in the early going with that elbow and then the scoop and the slam right there. And Cody Rhodes throwing some fists, not afraid to brawl, especially with somebody who is known for car wreck carnage between the ropes and certainly on the outskirts, Braun Breaker. This should be an interesting fight for Cody. Braun Breaker, as we mentioned, as you saw in the video package, he smashed that red, white, blue and gold championship over the skull of Cody four weeks ago on SmackDown. That is not something that just wears off overnight. Gotta wonder if Cody is coming in with any early fatigue. However, off that disaster kick and off the opening sprint, Cody Rhodes is looking pretty hot this far. The bionic elbow that the American Dream maybe would be proud of. But it's only a one count. But Braun Breaker has got to be feeling this onslaught from Cody. To get to his feet as he does, but Cody Rhodes is right there to make sure Braun, Braun cannot close the gap in momentum right now. Breaker rolling to the outside, but he's not safe because Cody's going for the suicide dive and he lands right on the rib cage of the number one contender. Cody Rhodes is fired up and he's looking to retain his United States Championship. All in the process of teaching this young man some respect tonight in Baltimore. Cody off the apron, going for looked to be a takedown, but Breaker sidestepped it at a clothesline of his own. Oh no, not on the outside of the ring. Braun Breaker's got Cody up. Oh man, power bomb in the apron. Oh, and he swings around with it. And the shoulder of Cody squashed up against the steel beam that is underneath that ring skirt. And just like that, the tides of change come over this matchup. Cody Rhodes is in the ring, and although he may be on his feet, you notice he's not trying to close the gap and go after Braun Breaker. Knows he was hurt moments ago, and he's got to let that rest up and recuperate as much as he can. It's Breaker back on the champion. On the hunt for the gold. Oh, wait a minute, Cody gets taken down off a midsection bulldog. And Baltimore may not be. Braun Breaker's favorite town to be in. Let's just leave it at that. But Cody Rhodes, however, I should say Braun Breaker, not even a phase by the crowd reaction, if you will. Braun Breaker is a blue chipper. He's got a mean streak. This has been well documented for months on SmackDown. Owns numerous big time victories against some of the hearts and souls of the blue brand, like Mustafa Ali, like Ricochet, like Dolph Ziggler. The Breaker wants to see his name in the history books. Wants to carve his name in the annals of the United States Championship lineage. But Cody Rhodes has obviously got other plans. Fought so hard to defeat Gunther at SummerSlam. Wanted that matchup so bad, and he pulled out the win at the biggest party of the summer. He's not looking to see this championship reign go up and smoke that early. Almost retaining the gold there off the moonsault, but Braun Breaker Still got the dog get him to keep fighting. The hip toss there that never goes out of style. Cody Rhodes is an old school heart. We know that about the American Nightmare. And it has been beneficial for him in his WWE career to say the least. Oh, now Breaker, fireman's carry position. Big time slam. And Cody just ate the canvas for Saturday Night Snack. Oh, wait a minute, Breaker in the corner. 
Look out for a spear that just cut Cody Rhodes in half. And we're gonna have a new United States Champion. Breaker's gonna win it here, but Cody gets the shoulder up and that was a close call for the American Nightmare. Face first off the canvas, and Breaker hit the spear. Only got the two. Damage obviously done, which Cody was trying to hurry up this matchup. Breaker survived the roll up, but that could really tell a story that Cody is not feeling 100% at the moment. And a sense of urgency may be coming over the American Nightmare to get the job done while he still can. Breaker on the outside, the United States Champion Cody Rhodes on his tail, and a drop kick and a down fall for the number one contender. Cody's gotta be hurting off that spear. LeBron Breaker may be hurting off that stiff shot and the fall, and there's Cody Rhodes with an unbalanced dive to the outside. It ain't pretty, but it's certainly effective. And I think that's all the champion cares about, taking the challenger off his feet and trying to keep him there. Cody Rhodes not afraid to See this match go to the outside. Not afraid to brawl with the number one contender. Breaker laid him out with his own championship a few weeks ago. That goes beyond business. That takes things into a personal level. That's trying to injure Cody Rhodes. Cody does not appreciate that, nor should anybody. Now tonight he sees Braun Breaker inside of the ring and wants to get that three count to remind Breaker that even though you're talented as all hell, even though your day will come, it's just not gonna come at the expense of my United States title reign. As Cody now with the cross body off the top rope and into the cover. And another close call, but Braun Breaker survives again. Great wrestling matchup for the United States Championship thus far. As Cody goes for the suplex, again, keeping it old school, but keeping it effective. A move that never goes out of style and a move that Braun Breaker realizes that he's got to bounce back from. Wait a minute. He's got the champion up and he's got the champion down for the press slam. And that may do it. New champ on the horizon, not just yet. Braun Breaker thought he had Cody. He has beaten many of, opponent, uh, of opponents, excuse me, with some of those same maneuvers, the spear. The fireman's carry into the press slam. But Cody Rhodes is a different breed. Ron Breaker knows that from doing his study of the American Nightmare. Breaker's a student of the game, but the American Nightmare is as well. Cody may be down, but I don't know if Cody's out yet. But Breaker trying to make sure he is dropping the elbow to the spine of the United States Champion. Braun Breaker taking a moment to soak things in, but I don't think this is the right idea. The champion's down, the champion could be out, and this is where something we have had, that has been well documented throughout the summer, throughout Braun Breaker's pursuit of championship gold. Very naive at times, and really lets that take over. The ego flows through Breaker. We've seen him make, make missteps in these types of big time matches in the past. Braun Breaker needs to go for the kill. He needs another spear, he needs another fireman's carry before Cody gets back into this. And speaking of such, Vertebreaker to retain the United States title, no. And that's not a move that is gonna win Cody Rose the matchup tonight, but it's certainly a move that is gonna add to the damage toll of the number one contender. Breaker into the ropes and Cody delivers a knee to take him down. Cody has yet to attempt that crossroads in this matchup. And probably for good reason. Everyone knows that's Cody's best target in his arsenal. And everyone's gonna do their homework and try to scout a reversal for it. Cody's gotta save it for when it matters most. So trying to get creative right now as he hangs Breaker up in the top rope with a kick right to the midsection. Now speaking of kicks to the midsection, Cody pummeling the number one contender in the corner. And the champion is on the pursuit of beating down the challenger, proving his worth as the United States Heavyweight Champion on Friday Night SmackDown. Breaker to his feet, but there's Cody off the drop kick. Cody's building some massive momentum. But it doesn't matter as Braun Breaker still has life left in him. This is what the United States Championship is all about, ladies and gentlemen, leaving your heart and soul and everything you got in between the ropes. That is how Cody won the title. 
Whether you like Breaker or not, that is really how he became the number one contender. It wasn't just attacking Cody Rhodes, but it was the arsenal of wins that Breaker was putting together. Now back in the corner, Breaker could be looking for a dose with that spear. And if he hits this, that may be the end of Cody's title reign. But Cody had it scouted and delivered a knee off the slingshot out of the corner by Breaker. A much timed reversal by Cody that may pay him dividends in the later rounds of this matchup, which we have entered. And Cody heading up to the middle buckle. The United States champion's wheels are spinning, going for a drop kick, but this time Breaker has it scouted. You can only go to the well so many times with the same maneuvers before it's your own misstep, and your opponent takes advantage. That's what Cody just found out. And the ropes, and oh man! Man, if that doesn't tell you the strength of Braun Breaker, I don't know what will. Sending Cody into the ropes meets him there with a shoulder block, and the champion just went flying up and over into the outside. It's only a measure of Braun Breaker's creativity. It's Breaker just trying to beat down the champion. Make a wither away from pillar to post. And hopefully leave on the other side as the United States champion of Friday Night SmackDown. The match continues on the outskirts and Cody getting set right in the barricade. The United States champion is in trouble right here, man. Braun Breaker is starting to pick the bones of the American Nightmare. And he better get things going before it's too late. Cody hit that Verter Breaker a few minutes ago. We've seen offensive maneuvers out of him since, but Breaker has turned the tides of this matchup. By that simple shoulder block to the outside, Breaker's looking like the favorite. Back inside the ring, Breaker could be looking for another fireman's carry. Press slam, Cody with the counter. Cody behind, crossroads! And that may do it, into the cover! Oh no, Breaker kicked out! Braun Breaker kicked out of Cody's best maneuver in the arsenal, the crossroads! Cody Rhodes, pacing in the ring, cannot believe that the number one contender survived. Oh wait a minute, Cody, what doesn't work the first, may work the second, a second crossroads! And that leads to the victory here tonight in Baltimore, Maryland. The American Nightmare Cody Rhodes fights war in between the ring, but comes out a soldier turned into a war veteran and a successful one at that on the other side as the United States Championship is held in its prestige and is held in the grasp of the American Nightmare Cody Rhodes. Here is your winner. Well, Cody Rhodes said he was willing to take on any and all comers. Defeated Ricochet last month on SmackDown. And next on the list was Braun Breaker tonight. An impressive challenger that I'm sure will be back for more. But when it comes to business here tonight at No Mercy, the United States Heavyweight title can only leave with one superstar. And that superstar's name is the American Nightmare, Cody Rhodes. The next time we come your way with a live premiere event, a special joint production of Monday Night Raw and Friday Night SmackDown, we are going international. Cardiff, Wales, Principality Stadium. It is WWE Clash at the Castle. And it is coming your way Sunday night, October the 22nd, live at 5 p.m. Eastern Time. Don't miss this international extravaganza as Raw and SmackDown present Clash at the Castle. The following contest is scheduled for one fall and is for the WWE Women's Championship. Well, I have been looking forward to this matchup since this woman, the Poison Pixie, earned her way to becoming the number one contender several weeks ago in the eight women battle royal. Candice LeRae returned after a couple of month hiatus, 
back in June, just days removed from Shayna Baszler, leaving King of the Ring as the WWE Women's Champion. Candice pushed Baszler to her absolute limits on that night on Friday Night SmackDown to the point where Shayna Baszler had to resort to a count-out victory just to retain the title over the Poison Pixie. You know, added a couple factors. Sure, Shayna Baszler might have been thrown off by the woman that accepted her open challenge that night, not expecting a return as Candice, returning Candice LeRae. But at the end of the day, Candice pushed Baszler to her limits. And that's got to be in the mind of both competitors coming into this matchup. And Candice may feel she's got the number of the Queen of Spades. But at the end of the day, let's remember who we're talking about here. This is Shayna Baszler, a woman who took down Asuka. Last month in Levi Stadium at SummerSlam has beaten Liv Morgan not once but twice in women's championship matches and has lot, excuse me, not lost a match since earlier this year prior to WrestleMania. Baszler has been on a roll, resurfacing to the top of the women's division in 2023, and that is the reason she holds the white and gold around her waist. Baszler has become, just as many called Asuka for the last 12 plus months, one of the most dominating and intimidating women to ever step foot inside the squared circle, and it's for good reason. Whether she pins you with your shoulders on the mat, or she taps you out to the Carafuda clutch, Baszler's got so many ways to beat you inside of that ring. But once again, none of those were able to defeat Candice LeRae several months ago, and Baszler had to resort to the countout victory. What will happen here tonight? What will be the result? Does Candice have the number of Baszler? Or do all these months later, does the Queen of Spades have a way to defeat the Poison Pixie, Candice LeRae? Women's Championship is on the line. Let's send things down to the squared circle for your official match reduction. Introducing the challenger from Riverside, California, Candice LeRae! And her opponent from Sioux Falls, South Dakota, she is the WWE Women's Champion, the Queen of Spades, Shayna Baszler. It is our third of fourth championship matches here tonight at No Mercy. CFG Bank Arena here in Baltimore has been rocking all night long, but our second women's division match of the night and the championship that resides at the top of the mountain with its rightful owner, the Queen of Spades, Shayna Baszler, is on the line. Candice LeRae has been chomping at the bit. She scratched and clawed for another opportunity. She gets it here tonight at No Mercy, but Shayna Baszler realizes who she is in the ring with. A world-traveled veteran, a superstar who has held titles all around the globe in Candice LeRae, former NXT Tag Team and WWE Tag Team Champion. Looking to win her first singles gold here in World Wrestling Entertainment, and it could come at the demise of Shayna Baszler. All remains to be seen. As I mentioned, this is a matchup I've been looking forward to ever since the night it was confirmed when Baszler outlasted seven other women on SmackDown to become the number one contender. Candice LeRae with Shayna Baszler on the run already and out to the outside and turns it into a Tornado DDT. Awesome maneuver there by the Poison Pixie. Man, if Candace keeps her foot on the gas pedal like that, I got no doubt that we'll be leaving the CFG Bank Arena with a new women's champion tonight. But you can never count out the Queen of Spades, Shayna Baszler, the ace in the hole. Into the cover early on, but I think, I think Candace LeRae knows she wasn't going to get the victory there, but playing into the fact of what happened a few months ago, Candace trying to get in the head of Baszler even more with that early pinfall. Nice head scissors take down there. Candace LeRae... Just some of the names that were in that battle royal a few weeks back. We're talking Bailey. We're talking the tag team champions, Katana Chance and Caden Carter. And the woman Candace defeated in the final two, sending her over the top rope. That being a woman we saw in action earlier tonight, the EST, Bianca Belair. Candace rightfully a top contender to take down Baszler. It's Shayna Baszler looking to make an example out of Candace tonight. No matter how much you want it, no matter how much you try, you're just not on my level. That is the message that Shayna has been spewing for months in the women's division. She owns multiple victories over Candice's tag team partner, Indy Hartwell, most recently dating back to a few weeks ago, and it's because of maneuvers like that. 
from the heavens with a superwoman punch that Baszler normally executes with her two feet on the mat, but obviously up in the ante in this women's title defense tonight. Wait a minute, check out Candice. Try to score a sneaky victory to leave as the women's champion, but Shayna Baszler not going to allow that result. Now going to start swinging with the closed fist and takes the legs out from under. Shayna Baszler as brash, as cocky, and it's for good reason. As they come, the dominating queen of spades, Shayna Baszler. This is just some of the manhandling that she will do inside of the ring to her opponents. Just ragged on them from pillar to post. Almost embarrassing. At, at times, it's almost as if Shayna Baszler plays with her opponents just to get in the mindset of her challengers. And maybe what she's doing at Candice LeRae right now. Remember what we said a few minutes ago. This is a woman in Shayna Baszler who defeated the Empress of Tomorrow, Asuka. Somebody who held the women's title for the better part of 12 months here in the WWE over the last year. And coming last month, a sold-out Levi Stadium in San Francisco, California at SummerSlam. But tonight, it's the sold-out CFG Bank Arena in Baltimore. And Shayna Baszler looking to go another pay-per-view with a successful defense. Here's the race early onslaught. Obviously running out of steam and Shayna Baszler looking to change the tides, but don't count out the poison pixie as she reverses Candice the race, or excuse me, reverses Shayna Baszler's maneuver there. Takes her down in the corner and again. Candice got all the tools to be a singles champion here in the WWE. She's going to have it one day, but will that one day be tonight? All remains to be seen. Baszler down, Candice scaling the ropes. We're going to go high risk, high reward. In the name of the women's title, high in the sky with the Asai Moon Soap, but it's only a one, or excuse me, only a two, not the three that Candice was hoping for. And the title for another moment remains with the name of the Queen of Spades around it. Nonetheless, great maneuver there by Candice the Right, just showing how much she wants to leave Baltimore as the champion, throwing caution in the wind. And now outrunning Shayna Baszler off a little game of cat and mouse. Baszler down on the outside, and Candice LeRae with the seated senton. The number one contender has her foot on the ass pedal tonight. And trying to race Shayna Baszler to the finish line in hopes of leaving with the trophy that is the women's title. Baszler down inside of the ring, and Candice going to keep her there. Does Candice have enough to become the women's champion tonight? She pushed Shayna to her limit several months ago. Wasn't able to get the job done. Shayna wasn't able to defeat Candice and had to resort to hooker by crook situations. Candice almost winning the championship. Not just yet. Baszler still got life. But as you see, Lorraine not going to slow down just yet. There's a reversal by Shayna sending Candice into the corner. And a big time knee to the jaw that could knock out any woman twice on Saturday. Just like that, it's a snap of the fingers where Shayna Baszler can immediately change the mood in a matchup. This reversal spoke too soon as Baszler hits one. Candice on the outside, and Baszler, Shayna Baszler could easily go for another count out victory tonight. It's obviously done her dividends against Candice in the past, as we mentioned. <laughs> Meeting Candice LeRae on the outside, and Shayna Baszler now on the challenger's tail. Could be looking to make a statement tonight. A lot of people think Candice is the favorite in this matchup because of what transpired on SmackDown a few months ago. Baszler looking to silence the naysayers here at No Mercy. Baszler down on the outside, or should say on spaghetti legs. A little bit of a cool down moment here. And I think this is this is smart strategy by both the champion and challenger in that moment. Take a breath. Well, you know you're gonna be going deep into this matchup. Now Candice again taking down Shayna Baszler off the ropes. Beautiful maneuver and follows it up with a springboard. That's going to do it. We got a new champion. Not just yet as Shayna Baszler again survives. And what is Candace going to have to do to leave Baltimore, Maryland as the women's champion? Into the ropes and Baszler gets sent over again. Candace LeRae has got to keep the foot on the gas pedal as she has done throughout this matchup. Baszler making her way back inside of the ring, but Candice LeRae gonna meet her there with a top rope DDT. Oh, and Shayna, you see the urgency. 
Scare that Candice was going to go for the three count off that big time DDT. Used every muscle in her body to roll to the outside and try to get back into this match. Ray sending Baszler into the ropes. Oh no, and Candice LeRae. Obviously notable, not able, or I should say, not afraid to take things to the air and tries to bring Shayna Baszler with her, but Baszler holds on to the top. Now it's Shayna Baszler changing the tides and dropping the hammer on the shoulder blade of the challenger. Will that do it? Catching Candice off guard, not just yet. A great matchup here, very physical. Between the number one contender, the poison pixie, Candice LeRae, and the WWE Women's Champion, the Queen of Spades, Shayna Baszler, who takes out the kneecap of Candice. And now here's where Shayna Baszler becomes ultra dangerous. The ground and pound on LeRae. Shayna not afraid to take things to the ground. Will wrestle anybody on the mat. With that MMA background, Shayna Baszler's got a lot of tools of the trade in her belt. Candice LeRae may have exhausted herself. So many high-risk maneuvers, so many attempts to win this matchup to no avail. Obviously damaged on Shayna Baszler, but Baszler has now turned the tides. Candice is fighting an uphill battle. There's a reversal there. Never count out the challenger. Wait a minute. Shayna Baszler again. The open palms. And now Baszler going for the arm bar, going for the submission hold. Candice LeRae taps out. This one is over. Candice has got to hold on, though. It's not the Carafuta clutch, but it's certainly another vicious submission hold in the Queen of Spades arsenal. Oh, but there you see Candice fighting out of it. The will to be champion, mustering up enough power to get out of that arm bar. Obviously damage done, but Candice going to keep fighting. What is Poison Rana by the Poison Pixie? We saw their husband, Johnny Gargano, hit that same maneuver on Guth earlier tonight. But now Candice pulls it out and out to the outside and momentum back in the challenger's corner. Go for the Acai cross body, but nobody home. Crash and burn at ringside. And Baszler looking to pick the bones of the challenger off her own costly misstep. Those high risk maneuvers aren't called that for any reason. And Candice LeRae found that out firsthand as the beatdown commences at ringside here in Baltimore. Candice LeRae, her best opportunity to become the champion might have just passed her by. And Shayna Baszler, right to pick the bones. Now heading back inside of the ring and could be looking for a count out victory just as she did back in June. Count of six here, wait a minute. Shayna Baszler's got other plans here. She sees Candace Stern on the outside, realizes that the veteran challenger still got life left in her, and Baszler has fired it up into a different gear. Shayna Baszler is serving out a class A whooping to the challenger at ringside, but Candace is doing her darndest to survive and thrive under the pressure, but there's a step up superwoman punch, and that could be all she wrote. Man, Baszler is fired up tonight, hell-bent on showing the world that she can be Candice LeRae. Sending a message to the locker room all in the same accord. Now into the cover to retain the championship of the women's division. And a close call there, but Candice kicks out of two. Oh no, and a kick to the gut. Baszler going for the Carafuda clutch. Submission hold locked in. Shayna Baszler has tapped out Liv Morgan, has tapped out Asuka, has tapped out so many opponents to this same submission hold. Will Candice LeRae suffer the same fate, or does she have enough in the arsenal to fight out of it? A couple of elbows to the gut and one to the jaw. Candice able to survive, being trapped inside that Carafuda clutch. Now a shot of adrenaline in the bones of the arsenal of the champion, face first! Goes Baszler. Candice is gonna do it. Off the footprint stomp. But a kick out by the champion. What a great contest. Back and forth physical battle between the poison pixie Candice LeRae and the queen of spades Shayna Baszler. All in the means of leaving Baltimore here tonight at no mercy as the WWE Women's Champion. Baszler dazed and Candice LeRae realizes that she is gonna have to keep on fighting. Keep wearing down the champion. Let the fatigue set in. Try to dish out as much punishment as she has felt. A nice takedown there by LeRae. 
Trying to take a moment to catch her breath, breathe, not make a mistake against the champion. And that is what Candice has to do. There's a lot of ways you can look at this matchup. But Candice going for a Gargano escape. And Shayna Baszler, the submission specialist herself, may have nowhere to go. And how apropos would it be if Shayna taps out to lose her title? The submission hold runs deep in the Gargano household. Candice has got it on tight. Oh, but the champion knows not only how to apply the submissions, but how to escape them. Knee to the back of the head. Makes Candice release the hold. Now sending the challenger into the ropes and a takedown. Now you notice how off the Karafuda clutch, Can Candice LeRae switched, to an switched into a new gear and got back in control of the match. And then off that Gargano escape, Shayna Baszler did the same. It's almost as if the submission holds that failed to close out this match woke up a fire in the opposer. Oh, wait a minute, Baszler. Muscles up LeRae. Spins her out with it. And Candice LeRae put to the wayside. And Shayna's going to retain the title. No! Candace kicked out. You have got to be kidding me. The underdog, Candace LeRae, this world travel veteran. Opportunities like tonight only come around so often. And LeRae is trying to make the most of it. But Shayna Baszler ragged all the challenger. Fired up right now, but Candace is still fighting. And Baszler's got to be second guessing herself. What is it going to take to keep Candace down? She may have to resort to another count out victory tonight to retain her title. All remains to be seen as Candace is on a knee, but Baszler, like a shark in the water, going for a second. Karafuda clutch on the challenger. How much life left does Candace have? Struggling to hold on, but she's got nowhere to go, and Shayna Baszler taps out. An awesome performance by Candace. Wait a minute. Oh, oh, oh my goodness. Wait just a second. From Monday Night Raw, Mrs. Money in the Bank is here at the SmackDown exclusive No Mercy. Ladies and gentlemen, Miss Money in the Bank is cashing in her contract. You have got to be kidding me. The Nightmare Rhea Ripley is here at No Mercy, and she's cashing in her Money in the Bank contract against Shayna Baszler. Oh, look at Baszler. Shayna Baszler's adrenaline's still pumping. Rhea Ripley realizing that Candice was going to be possibly Shayna's best possible chance at losing the title tonight and realizing that Shayna is not going to be 100% after the bell has now chosen to cash in her briefcase. Rhea Ripley was here tonight. The Raw Superstar backstage in the SmackDown locker room obviously hiding out, hiding her whereabouts and causing a surprise for whoever was to win this match and it just so happened to be the Queen of Spades. Look who we're watching right now. The fresh Rhea Ripley has been taken off her feet by Shayna Baszler. Rhea may have underestimated the adrenaline of the champion that is still pumping, and Baszler still might have a little more left in the tank to try to retain her title. Oh, Baszler's going for the arm bar. Shayna's going for the arm bar on Rhea Ripley. Are we about to see a tap out here and Mrs. Money in the Bank's opportunity go to waste? Oh, Rhea Ripley getting out of it. The Nightmare, not expecting Shayna to have any fight left in her. But Baszler is still swinging. Go for the Superwoman punch. Rhea Ripley in this impromptu matchup. Muscles up the champion, and down she goes. Rhea Ripley realizing that Shayna still might have a little left in her, and she's going to have to inflict some punishment. Is the Eradicator. There's Baszler from behind in this impromptu women's title match. Money in the Bank cash in as Monday Night Raw's Rhea Ripley is cashing in on Shayna Baszler from SmackDown for the WWE Women's title. Shayna going for another cover there on the Nightmare Rhea Ripley. I cannot believe what we're seeing right now. Moments after Shayna Baszler retained her championship against Candice LeRae here at No Mercy. An incredible effort by Candice. The nightmare Rhea Ripley has arrived on the scene to try to pick the bones of the champion. However, Shayna Baszler is still fighting as if her life does depend on it. And a huge portion of it does with the women's championship. This thing gets taken to the outside by two very intimidating women. Shayna Baszler has really controlled the majority of this Money in the Bank cash in this far. 
Baszler could be looking for a count out. Shayna Baszler didn't need to resort to it against Candice LeRae. It doesn't look like she's going to resort to it right now against Rhea Ripley, but at least taking the moment to catch her breath, take a breather over the nightmare. And look at this on the outside. Baszler taking down Rhea. Rhea Ripley absolutely dazed and confused. Oh, wait a minute. Spoke too soon. Muscling up the Queen of Spades. Oh, man. A sit-out slam at ringside. And Shayna Baszler well, pops up and throws Rhea Ripley to the barricade. I can't believe what we're witnessing right now. Baszler's still swinging. Rhea Ripley feels like the underdog. And this Money in the Bank cash in, does she not? Oh, now Rhea trying to wear down the champion. Stretching her out. Trying to inflict some punishment that might already be there by Candice LeRae's assault. Rhea Ripley was expecting a quick and easy matchup against Baszler or Candice LeRae, whoever left this champion tonight. But she is not getting, she is getting the opposite as Baszler hits a knee and Shane is gonna spoil the cash in. No, not just yet as Rhea Ripley kicks out. My goodness. If this night wasn't insane already, it has gone from crazy to even better and Baszler going for the Karafuda clutch on the Eradicator. Just tapping out Candice LeRae moments ago to this very submission hold. It could be the end of the Money in the Bank road for Rhea Ripley here at No Mercy. The Nightmare trying to hold on, trying to swing some elbows and create some distance between herself and the women's champion of the world. Sending Baszler into the ropes and Rhea Ripley. What's the Nightmare got in mind? Just trying to wear down Shayna Baszler, make her outrun herself. Rhea better stay on the champion here because clearly Shayna Baszler is motivated as all hell not to leave Baltimore tonight without her title. Rhea Ripley with another takedown in this impromptu matchup. Rhea Ripley from Monday Night Raw has arrived on the scene to cash in the Money in the Bank briefcase she won two months ago in Columbus, Ohio. Look at the strength out of the nightmare. Baszler is no small woman inside of that ring, but Rhea Ripley takes her for a ride into the cover to win the title. And Baszler again with the shoulder up. I cannot believe what we are witnessing, and neither can the eradicator of World Wrestling Entertainment. Baszler's obviously hurt, obviously fatigued. And now Rhea Ripley, oh wait a minute, could be looking to eradicate Shayna Baszler for good off the rip tide. The champion down, but is the champion out as the Nightmare Rhea Ripley looks to capitalize on her Money in the Bank cash in. And we have a new WWE Women's Champion. Wow. I cannot believe the events we just witnessed. Candice LeRae pushing Baszler to her limit. Baszler survived, but Rhea Ripley was lying in the wayside to pick the bones of the champ. Here is your winner, and new WWE Women's Champion, Rhea Ripley. History certainly made tonight as Monday Night Raw's Rhea Ripley arrives at the SmackDown exclusive event. No mercy to cash in her Money in the Bank briefcase on the WWE Women's Championship, which just so happened to be held by Shayna Baszler, the new WWE Women's Champion, the Nightmare, Rhea Ripley. Well, the action doesn't stop for anybody and live tomorrow night in Chicago is the Monday Night Raw exclusive live premiere event. It is WWE Unforgiven and what a night it is going to be tomorrow night in the Allstate Arena. The almighty Bobby Lashley was screwed over a few weeks ago by one of the future pieces of Monday Night Raw, Carmelo Hayes. Lashley looking to run things back and teach this young man a lesson in respect. We just saw Rhea Ripley taking home gold, but her boys in the Judgment Day, Finn Balor and Damian Priest must defend theirs tomorrow night as they put the championships of the World Tag Team Division on the line against Butch and Rich Holland of the Brawling Brutes.
It is a triple threat matchup for the Intercontinental title as LA Knight defends the gold against Cedric Alexander and Sami Zayn. Two viable challengers and one champion all vying for the same end prize. Becky Lynch has been chomping at the bit to get her hands on the Empress of Tomorrow since February. And Asuka looking to prove her dominance all over again. It's Becky Lynch versus Asuka in a long-awaited WrestleMania rematch. It'll be Falls Count Anywhere, a matchup that can end up anywhere in the Windy City as the street champ Solo Sokoa and the Blackheart Tommaso Ciampa have their rubber match where no disqualifications, no countouts, and anything goes tomorrow night. And speaking of anything goes, Brock Lesnar and Matt Riddle have been at each other's throats for weeks to the point where this matchup needed to take place inside the confines of a solid steel cage. And in the main event tomorrow night on Unforgiven, the WWE Championship is on the line. Revenge is on the mind of the Celtic warrior Sheamus, and he looks to bring home the gold in the process. The visionary, the WWE Champion, Seth Rollins, one-on-one -on -one with the Celtic warrior Sheamus tomorrow night at Unforgiven. But coming up next, it is the main event here in Baltimore. Five-man elimination challenge for the world heavyweight title. AJ Styles, Austin Theory, Edge, Randy Orton, and Drew McIntyre. Who's leaving Baltimore with the big gold belt? It's the five-man elimination match to determine who will lead Friday Night SmackDown onward for months. Drew McIntyre has reigned upon the blue brand as its champion, contesting against any and all comers, proving that 2023 has truly been the year of the Scottish Warrior. But four men have staked their claim for the gold. The 2023 King of the Ring winner, Austin Theory, the phenomenal AJ Styles, the Viper, Randy Orton, and the Rated R Superstar Edge. Chaos and Anarchy have defined the path that has taken us to tonight's main event, a matchup where four men must fall to determine one true victor. An all-star lineup of champions, Hall of Famers, world-traveled veterans, and those seeking ultimate immortality. Styles, Orton, Edge, Theory, McIntyre, five superstars, one ring, one winner, who will leave no mercy as the World Heavyweight Champion? It is main event time! CFG Bank Arena, Baltimore, Maryland. Five man elimination match. No countouts, no disqualifications. Last man standing is leaving with the World Heavyweight Championship. And here comes challenger number one, the Hall of Famer, a man who has a list of accolades a mile long, the Rated R Superstar Edge, looking to proclaim another stake at the top of the mountain with the big gold belt. The following contest is an elimination match and is for the World Heavyweight Championship. Introducing the challenger from Toronto, Ontario, Canada, weighing in at 249 pounds, Edge. There is a big fight feel atmosphere in the sold out CFG Bank Arena. This place has been hot and heavy all night long for what has been an epic SmackDown exclusive live premiere event. But it all concludes in the main event of No Mercy with a world title on the line. And Edge has had a lot of recent history with one of the men who is quite frankly most responsible for this five man elimination match here tonight at No Mercy. And from Atlanta, Georgia, weighing in at 200. 20 pounds, Austin Theory! Three weeks ago on SmackDown, we were set to have AJ Styles versus Randy Orton to determine the number one contender to the world title. Austin Theory interrupted that matchup, proclaiming it a no contest, leaving both men laying inside the squared circle. The following week, Theory was set to go one-on-one -on -one with Edge, a man who had defeated him in the lead-up to SummerSlam last month. 
Theory ambushed Edge earlier in the night. He was unable to compete. AJ Styles stepped in to fight Austin Theory, which then led to even more chaos as Edge made his way to the ring. Randy Orton made his way to the ring. Four challengers that have been fighting back and forth for weeks. It was only right that we threw everybody inside of the squared circle, put the World Heavyweight Championship on the line, and settled the score once and for all. Well, tensions have been rising high on SmackDown. It's for good reason. Everybody chomping at the bit to wave the flag of the blue brand. Something's got to give. And we could be looking at the man who has the most phenomenal opportunity to take advantage of tonight in AJ Styles. And representing the OC from Gainesville, Georgia, Weighing in at 218 pounds, the phenomenal AJ Styles. AJ Styles last held a championship going back to April of 2022 when he won the WWE title. It was just a few months later that he was knocked off the top of the mountain and who defeated him? That would be the rated R superstar Edge. Of course, Austin Theory, very familiar with these five-man elimination matches because it was one year and change ago where Theory pinned Edge in this same style of match to have his short-lived reign as the WWE Champion. So much history between these five superstars, but something, as we mentioned, has got to give tonight. A lot of egos, an all-star lineup as it's been built, but only one man can leave the World Heavyweight Champion. Will it be Edge? Will it be Austin Theory? Will it be AJ Styles, or will it be your fourth challenger, the Apex Predator? And from St. Louis, Missouri, weighing in at 250 pounds, the Viper, Randy Orton! There is a different vibe in the eyes of Randy Orton over the last few months. It's an eerie presence that breathes one thing and one thing only desperation to become World Heavyweight Champion. Orton has been wanting a one-on-one -on -one match with Drew McIntyre, and even though he got it last night on SmackDown, the World Heavyweight Championship wasn't on the line, and of course we saw what happened last night with AJ Styles hitting the ring and laying out Randy Orton with a phenomenal forearm. Just adding into all the chaos, but as we mentioned, Randy Orton has been wanting that one-on-one -on -one match for the world title. He originally was supposed to get it at Money in the Bank until Edge intervened, leading to a triple threat. Randy Orton and Edge met last month at SummerSlam. Orton picked up the victory. But all roads lead to right here tonight. Randy Orton's got another opportunity for the big gold belt. Can he capitalize on it? Can he get the job done? Can he win the world title? That was his very first world title here in the WWE. Certainly all five men in this matchup have a viable chance at winning. But who is going to be the last man standing for the World Heavyweight Championship? And you want to talk about the mood changing? Look no further than the man who has taken 2023 by storm. This has been the year of the Scottish warrior, of this fire-breathing dragon known as the World Heavyweight Champion, Drew McIntyre. From winning Elimination Chamber, to winning the world title at WrestleMania, and defending it week after week, month after month since, McIntyre has staked his claim on the top of the mountain, but will tonight be the night that McIntyre takes a long and drastic fall to the bottom? And from Ayers, Scotland, weighing in at 254 pounds, he is the World Heavyweight Champion, the Scottish Warrior, Drew. McIntyre! Drew McIntyre has defeated John Cena, Seth Rollins, Braun Breaker, Edge, Randy Orton, and Austin Theory. Obviously, those a lot of those matches coming in singles affairs, pinning Randy Orton in the triple threat back at Money in the Bank. But regardless of the history, it is obviously not going to be an easy task whichever way you spin it. And there's four other men in this matchup. McIntyre's chances of leaving as World Heavyweight Champion are drastically different. Will tonight be the night that the Scottish Warriors run at the top finally comes to a screeching halt? Or is Drew McIntyre going to continue to add to his legacy 
as being one of the greatest world heavyweight champions to ever live. Well, here we go, ladies and gentlemen. The stage is set. It is your main event tonight, the CFG Bank Arena in Baltimore, Maryland. SmackDown exclusive, no mercy event. Five-man elimination matchup. And that is the prize that is at stake, the world heavyweight championship. Four challengers, one champion, last man standing, proclaims the gold, and here we go, the bell has sounded and we are underway. No count outs, no disqualifications, all five men in the ring at one time, pinfall or submission, the only way to gain an elimination. There's gonna be a lot of action to keep up with, we'll do our best. Styles going for the early elimination on Austin Theory, but gotta imagine it's gonna take a lot to keep these men down tonight. Of all four, I should say all five of these men chomping at the bit to leave as world champion. All the chaos that we have seen on SmackDown as of late with these five men going back and forth with each other. Tonight is the night. Put up or shut up and become world heavyweight champion. Austin Theory going after McIntyre. And again, as we mentioned, Austin Theory very well may be the reason we even have this five-man elimination match tonight because he is the one who originally interrupted the Orton and Edge, or excuse me, Orton and AJ Styles match it was going to give us a solid number one contender for the world title. Nonetheless, all these weeks later, this is what it has come to. Five men in the ring at one time. It's Edge and AJ Styles going at it. Remember Edge and Styles, a lot of history between those two men. And actually, the last time they were inside the squared circle was back at WrestleMania earlier this year when they teamed up to fight Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn, unfortunately, in a losing effort for the two men. McIntyre and Austin Theory. SmackDown main event of SummerSlam. What a match that was last month in Levi Stadium. McIntyre, of course, retaining the World Heavyweight title. The 2023 King of the Ring winner in the young Austin Theory. Looking to finally win the World Heavyweight title that he has been pursuing all summer long. It's Randy Orton trying to introduce some steel steps into this matchup. Again, no disqualifications. Randy Orton not afraid to break out the plunder, if need be, here in Baltimore. As this matchup progresses, once again, ladies and gentlemen, we will be live right back here tomorrow night. Emanating from the Allstate Arena in the Windy City, Chicago, Illinois, 5 p.m. Eastern time for the Monday Night Raw exclusive, Unforgiven event. For the weekend it has been awesome double header. Of course, Cruiserweight Classic earlier this afternoon, which continues next Saturday. And of course, the road to Clash at the Castle on October the 22nd. Gonna kick off this coming Monday Night Raw. The action never stops around these parts. We just keep on moving on the on and on, up and up. Wouldn't have it any other way. You aren't gonna find this action anywhere else. What a night it has been here in No Mercy. Cody Rhodes retaining his United States Championship over Braun Breaker. And about what we saw just moments ago, Rhea Ripley cashing in her Money in the Bank contract to become the new WWE Women's Champion. Santos Escobar, Chad Gable tearing down the house for the Cruiserweight title. It's been an awesome night, but it is main event time, and the world title is on the line. Randy Orton again, you see, going for those steel steps on the outside. Orton's got something in mind with the hardware, but every man trying to avoid it, knowing that could drastically change the perspective of this match. And while Edge on the top row, dropping an elbow to the heart of the phenomenal AJ Styles. Edge not afraid to go high risk if it means leaving World Heavyweight Champion and off the edge of Houston, AJ Styles could be looking for a victory. Now oh, wait a minute. Instead of going for the pinfall, Edge is going to go for the exclamation point. A spear on Styles. Going for the first casualty of the match. Will that do it? No, AJ gets the shoulder up and that was a close call for the Rated R Superstar. Edge almost eliminating AJ Styles. It's gonna take four pinfalls or submissions to determine one true World Heavyweight Champion here tonight. Edge and Styles, the only two men left inside the squared circle right now as McIntyre stuck between a rock and a hard place at ringside with Theory and Orton and McIntyre. What a reversal there on the 2023 King of the Ring winner. Well, AJ Styles going for a pinfall on Edge inside the ring to no avail. Orton and Theory going at it. Those two men have got a lot of history with each other. Both on the same side of the ring and opposing. 
So McIntyre back inside the ring, keeping his eye on all the challengers right now. Goes behind on AJ Styles. McIntyre looking to take advantage. Got to have eyes in the back of your head in this style of matchup. Unfortunately, that's better said than done. McIntyre ducking out the edge clothesline there. The World Heavyweight Champion has had some battles with Edge already. Over the match that they had back in June at King of the Ring. What an amazing fight that was between McIntyre and Styles. Nonetheless, AJ on his feet. Not by will, but by force of the World Heavyweight Champion who squashes him in the corner. Great move there by Drew McIntyre. The fight continues in a Glasgow kiss on AJ Styles. But McIntyre's not done. AJ's already ate the worst from Edge. And now he's about to eat the worst from the champion. Claymore kick on the phenomenal AJ Styles. Into the cover. That's it. First casualty of the match is the phenomenal AJ Styles. Five becomes four, and we're one step closer to determining who leaves Baltimore as the World Heavyweight Champion. AJ Styles drawing the unlucky hand, being the first casualty of the match. Ate the execution and the spear from Edge, then the Glasgow kiss and the Claymore from McIntyre. Now we're down to four. Edge and Theory, so much unfinished business between those two men. Several weeks they've been brawling. I mean, last night on SmackDown, brawls in the Barclays Center in Brooklyn. Edge laid out Theory. Theory put Edge through a table. It's just been chaos on SmackDown as of late. Orton inside of the ring with Edge. Those two men picking up right where they left off at SummerSlam. Remember what happened a few weeks ago on SmackDown, Orton ambushing Edge and leaving him with an RKO in the middle of the WWE Universe. Nonetheless, three superstars back inside the squared circle. The 2023 King of the Ring winner, Austin Theory, takes his time. And McIntyre with a big time fall away headbutt on the rated R superstar. Physical matchup this has been. But you expect nothing less when you got five all stars in the ring, decorated performers, every man trying to leave with the world heavyweight title. Wait a minute. Austin Theory's got a steel chair and sneaks up behind Orton. And now McIntyre, who already had his eyes locked on Orton, continues to fight. Theory's beating down Edge with a solid steel chair. Chaos and anarchy are the only words to describe these SmackDown All Stars right now. McIntyre avoiding that chair by any means necessary and certainly not something he wanted to feel the brunt of. Austin Theory trying to get to his feet. Meanwhile, as you see, McIntyre avoids a crossbody on the outside, but by hook or by crook, Randy Orton found him with the steel steps. So much action to keep up with in this main event as the brawl continues. It's a Pier 6 brawl. It's starting to look like a car wreck in the middle of Baltimore. Edge back inside the square. Well, at least for a moment. I don't know what the Rated R Superstar's got in mind as McIntyre's working over Randy Orton, throwing him up against that barricade now. Austin Theory, however, going after the steel steps at ringside. Oh, now Edge to a couple of chops to the Viper. And now McIntyre from behind, sending Orton to the barricade again, and Edge comes from behind with the Bulldog. AJ Styles already falling in this matchup after eating a execution and a spear from Edge, then a Glasgow kiss and a Claymore by McIntyre just a few moments later. No way the phenomenal one or anybody in this match could have been outlasted that. Theory trying to go underneath the ring for some plunder again, but Edge says otherwise. Randy Orton and Edge back at it inside the squared circle. Drew McIntyre may be the smartest man in all of Baltimore right now. Just watching as these challengers beat the hell out of each other at ringside. The World Heavyweight Champion putting the fuel tanks on reserve, if you will. Edge sending Theory back inside of the ring. I'm sure Edge would love to eliminate Austin Theory tonight, and I'm sure vice versa, Theory would love to eliminate Edge. He blames Edge for derailing his momentum on the road to SummerSlam, and somehow blames Edge for costing him the world title match because of it at SummerSlam. Make it make sense is what we asked of Austin Theory, but Theory's gonna be in his own mind and say what he wants to say. Nobody's to blame, or I should say everyone's to blame, but Austin Theory in his own mind. 
Nonetheless, all the talent in the world, Theory looking to inflict some punishment on Drew McIntyre. A sidewalk slam. And CFG Bank Arena has been sold out for weeks. They came out in droves tonight, and they've been loving the SmackDown superstars and their display of athletic ability inside and outside of the squared circle. And now Theory's got the chair again and crashing it over the skull of the world heavyweight champion of McIntyre. There's a reason this man has been champion for the majority of 2023, and it's because he's learned how to absorb maneuvers like that. Going for the elimination, he gets the two, but McIntyre gets the shoulder off the canvas. And Theory, nice scoop and a slam. Down goes the world champion. Grabbing the chair again, and McIntyre trying to avoid casualty with the weapons. He knows they are going to be a detriment to his world title reign. Meanwhile, Edge, execution on McIntyre to eliminate the champion and guarantee a new one. No, McIntyre gets the shoulder up, a close call for the Rated R Superstar. Edge could have easily eliminated McIntyre there and guaranteed we were going to leave no mercy with a new world heavyweight champion, but it was not to be just yet. Oh, wait a minute, Theory, Theory, A-Town down on Edge. Will that do it? Second casualty on its way, no. Edge survives the A-Town down. And Randy Orton with an RKO. And will that do it? Will Theory be hitting the showers? Not just yet. Business is picking up in the main event. Edge and Houston to McIntyre, no casualty. Eight town down the edge, no casualty. RKO to Theory, still standing, and we're still left with four in this five-man matchup. World champion Drew McIntyre back in the fray. Oh, Randy Orton trying to swing that steel chair to no avail. Nice counter by the Viper. McIntyre goes for the chair, or should say goes for the challenger now. Going for the power bomb and what strength by Orton. And now Orton to eliminate the World Heavyweight Champion, but obviously Edge not realizing there was a pin going on, and there's an RKO. And I think Edge's night may be over with. No! Edge gets the shoulder up and leads the fight on. Another moment in this main event. It's been fish, finisher city in there the last few minutes, but not finishing the matchup for any of these superstars. Austin Theory's beating the hell out of the world champion Drew McIntyre ringside. I believe yes with a steel chair. Oh man! Oh wait a minute. Inside the squared circle. A spear to Randy Orton. And Edge looking to stick it to his longtime rival. Elimination incoming, not just yet as Randy Orton kicks out. You have got to be kidding me. Edge with the same sentiments. Oh, but Edge is going back in the corner. Keeping the cog on the wheel. And a second spear to the Viper. Payback in mind. Elimination is to be. We are down to three men. Randy Orton is gone. Edge, Austin Theory, and the World Heavyweight Champion, Drew McIntyre. And what a match this has been. We started with five, we're down to three. Orton's out, Styles is out. Will it be Austin Theory? Will it be Edge? Or will it be McIntyre? And we're not gonna have a voice the time we get to Chicago tomorrow night for Unforgiven, I'll tell you that right now. Especially after this night and this main event. Look at Edge, nice counter there. Grabbing McIntyre with his head on a swivel and knocking the champion off the apron. And now Theory, trying to take advantage of Edge who had his back turned, scooping a slam. Keeping it simple yet effective there. Randy Orton making his way back to the locker room, joining AJ Styles as the next elimination in this main event matchup. Austin Theory now in the ring, the Rated R Superstar on the outside, McIntyre on the outside. Every man's obviously fatigue starting to set in, every man trying to take a breath. Now Edge back inside of the ring, with his eyes locked in the World Heavyweight Champion, and taking McIntyre down. On well, Theory going for a shot with the chair, Edge says no, and a kick to the gut. Down goes Theory. Oh, wait a minute. Edge has got his eyes locked. Could be looking to deliver another spear in this match on Austin Theory for the elimination. No! 
Well, every man but McIntyre has been hit with that spear. But McIntyre now gets hit with a second execution. The Rated R Superstar is on fire. But McIntyre kicks out again. McIntyre with a kick bump. Somehow still with enough adrenaline, enough energy to keep this fight going. Oh my goodness, but Theory from behind with the steel chair. Austin Theory has utilized the chairs in this matchup. Trying to take any shortcut, and I guess we can't even call it a shortcut because it's all legal in this matchup to leave the World Heavyweight Champ. Oh, Edge with a face buster. I think Theory might have hit the chair on the way down. Well, now Edge going for an elimination over the champion now. McIntyre gets eliminated. We're guaranteed a new World Heavyweight Champion. Whether that be Edge or Austin Theory, I don't know. This is Edge's third opportunity at the world title in the last four months. Can he finally take advantage of it? Or will Austin Theory take advantage of his second after failing to win the gold at SummerSlam? Finds himself back this close from Drew McIntyre's world title. All three men back inside the squared circle, but for how much longer? Wait a minute, Theory catching Drew. Stacking him up and drops him on the knee. And that could be all she wrote. New world champion on the horizon. But McIntyre gets the shoulder up again. The champion survives, at least for another moment. Now it's Edge and Theory back inside the ring. We talked about it earlier. We'll say it again. How good would it feel on both ends of the spectrum to have an elimination for both of these men? Theory would love to pin Edge. Edge would love to stick it to Theory. But who is going to get it done tonight at no mercy? Once again, we want to thank you for joining us all night long here in Baltimore, Maryland. And we'll be live at 5 p.m. Eastern time tomorrow night in Chicago at Unforgiven. And Edge with a spear on Theory out of nowhere. Cover. Theory's gone. Austin Theory eliminated by hands of the Rated R Superstar. And we are down to two. Claymore. Cover! Edge kicks out! The Hall of Famer kicks out! The matchup is far from over! Edge with his second elimination. He has sent Orton to the locker room. He sent Theory to the showers. But now McIntyre with 10 beats of the boundrum. My goodness! Drew McIntyre is fired up. Edge hit that spear on Theory out of nowhere. Eliminated Theory. But now Edge, one-on-one -on -one with the World Heavyweight Champion. Can he survive? McIntyre on the challenger's tail. Second Claymore. McIntyre goes for the cover again. And that will do it. What a main event. And once again, Drew McIntyre survives. I cannot believe the action, the chaos, the anarchy that we just witnessed in the middle of CFG Bank Arena. And somehow, some way, this fire-breathing Scottish warrior is still on top of the mountain, waving the flag of the blue brand as the world heavyweight champion. What a main event here at No Mercy. Here is your winner, and still World Heavyweight Champion, the Scottish Warrior, Drew McIntyre. Drew McIntyre is cementing his legacy. We are going to look back years from now at this reign as one of the greatest runs on top as World Heavyweight Champion. McIntyre has lined him up, and he has knocked them all down, and I can't believe he outlasted Four challengers in one match, but if anybody could do it, it's that fire-breathing warrior, the world heavyweight champion, Drew McIntyre. We will be live tomorrow night from the Windy City, Chicago, Illinois, for the Raw exclusive live premiere event, 5 p.m. Eastern time for Unforgiven. But as for tonight, we thank you for joining us here at the CFG Bank Arena in Baltimore, Maryland for the SmackDown exclusive No Mercy. And we leave you with still World Heavyweight Champion, Drew McIntyre. Good night, everybody.
game pace on when I chase like that. Yeah, I play so strong with a knife in the back. I'm a swing home run like a baseball bat. Gonna see me rise if you hate on that. I don't play both sides, doing me no cap. I'm a rock.